All right. And we are live. The last word. Lord Cognito, any bontis fresh on that early, somewhat Destiny Carefire, somewhat Flashpoint vibes are, as we're missing our wayward child today. <laughs> <laughs> he is not here. Travis uh, being our child is more fitting yes. than probably half of you realize. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Our wayward child, our, our scion in arms, That's unfortunately, yeah, getting away from the two cabals. But uh, what's up, Edith? Talk to the cheat. How we doing, man? Uh, doing good. I've uh, been hanging out with a bunch of pals for a minute, um, you know, got invaded in, by in love fans way? and uh, other Ooh. things. Mm -hmm. um, no, having fun with that. Um, wanted to jump into Enshrouded as well. Just got uh, access to that one. Nice. Looks like Skull and Bones is about to have a beta. Suicide Squad starts. Bro. What day is that, dude? Hold on. These games, bro. Suicide Squad yeah. is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then I need like a calendar. Uh, thank for keeping the show going, even though D2 is oh, a bit dry right now. Love, love. We are at episode 281. We are hitting 300 hell or high water. I'm telling you that now, because oh, yeah. we got to oh, yeah. at least break that mark for Travis yes. um, and everything yes. else. Travis, of course, got to do his Infinity Gauntlet. He was on Unlocked. So if you guys do want to catch up on Travis, he was on IGN's Unlocked with Ryan and Destin. Talking all things Pal World since he reviewed it. Um, nice. So shout out to him. But yeah, no, show's it. not going anywhere, at least not for any time soon. There may be trade-offs of who's in town and stuff like that. But it's kind of our way to connect because we're on all sides of the country. It's our way to kind of keep touch every week. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, like played pretty good amount of Power World. Like just kind of saw Power World exploding. was like, I kind of need to get on this. As a creator, I feel like you're... I was... I feel like there was a point I saw Power World even come through Twitter and like I could have applied for earlier access mm. and I should have, obviously, when you see the sales. So it's kind of one of those. But you never know on all you of it. You know. don't. Yeah. So it was it's kind of the thing where it's like I could have had earlier access, may have had something ready. But it's like you could have done that and been like, is this thing going to go off? Is this worth the video? And then doo, 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 like just would have been smarter to be oh. ready. But I'm actually yeah. having fun with it. Like, that's the thing. It's nice. this weird. It is. So. Haven't played Pokemon in a long time. Played it older on Game Boy. Played a little bit here and there. Seen kind of even like, you know, Skill Up, for example, kind of bashes the recent Pokemons because they haven't done a lot. They've also been really Ooh. unoptimized. Like Breath of the Wild for doing what it's doing. Now, granted, it's Nintendo, but they make it run as probably good as it can. Mario Odyssey. It's pretty damn smooth when you play through that. I don't really have major issues there. But... But when it comes to, you know, Pokemon in general, it's like it feels like it has been a lot of the same for a while for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it needed uh, this kind of like reinvention. Now, I had heard everyone was called this Pokemon with guns. That's what everybody heard. That was the heard it a while ago. You're like, this yeah, looks that was line. ridiculous, kind of goofy. But what they don't tell you is it's the survival base aspect of the pals paired with their jobs. Now, granted, Travis jokes about slave labor and everything else which is just horrible but it's like there's a lot of bad jokes there's a lot of bad jokes in this one i mean you can actually throw the balls the spheres at some of the human enemies that are out there and capture yes. them done that can a couple of times them, and then you, you can sell the them on the black market it's just all wrong it's so can wrong we, can you make the humans work in your no base? but you can put them in a zoo and just have them stand there so they're just in like this display case so there's okay. like a, yeah, there's like a display case. And if you put pals in there, they won't like get hungry or anything, but yeah. they also won't function for a job. So then if you mm. turn around, um, if you have one of the, you can have a vendor, like you could capture a vendor if you get them on low health and bring them back to your base. And the nice yeah. thing about that is you have a vendor access all the time. Oh, so he got to do the vendor job. Yeah. So he's a vendor in your base. So you've just always got access to somebody to sell, which is cool. Okay. The humans are terrible for doing work. Um, <laughs> So, but it's the, it's, so all of that horrible jokes and everything aside. Yes, yes, yes. You have, you know, take, it's one of the first ones you get. You're like, oh, there's this Kativa or whatever. It's a cat. So you got a little cat pal. But it's the thing is like, if he's part of your party, all of a sudden you have 50% extra weight, 50 pounds more weight capacity or whatever it is. And then if you put five of them on your team and you're early on in the game and these guys are like level one or two, all of a sudden mm. your weight that you can carry would go from like 300 at the base to 550. Mm. And if you're going out on farming runs in the early yeah. part of a game, which yeah. it is a base, it is more of a survival game probably than anything. Um, mm -hmm. 
combination of things, but you've yeah. got now near double the capacity from just this one pal. So Ooh. there's different ones that do different jobs right. and it's those things. It's like, okay, so I've got my stove for cooking. You know, like, okay, normally I would have to sit there and cook my food. Well, now right. you have a kindling pal. So it's a fire one like Fox Marks mm -hmm. who you can just sit there and be like, okay, I need to cook, you know, hundred of these berries. Cause berries are an easy thing you come by for a while yeah, at yeah. first. Yep, yep. Okay. Well, I'm going to go off on a run, do what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Come back. Yeah. I've got a hundred berries cooked because Fox Parks is sitting there. And then I've got okay. ingots that I need to melt from or need to melt ore mm -hmm. down. And I've got, you know, Fox Parks sitting there just like keeping the kiln or the, <laughs> the furnace cooking the entire time while I'm gone. And then you've got farming. So you've got these like little chipmunks that will plant stuff. Then you've got mm -hmm. a penguin that will come and spray water and water the plants. Mm -hmm. Then you've got other ones that are um gonna come around and gather like basically doing the harvesting so this uh -huh. whole farm cycle once you get enough of the pals working it mm -hmm. goes through like the gathering the watering the harvesting you've got some mm -hmm. that will do logging and mining and Attic. what's up addicts love the love the non-destiny talk last work ask cog about black people <laughs> in water <laughs> and pal god that's that's a fun one. It's a fun story. The First game. Of all. Okay. Well, yeah. This I gotta hear because this is a super chat, and now I gotta have the fun story all right. that so I don't get canceled for. No, no, you're gonna cancel. You good? good <laughs> I, I can say it. You can. I can't. You can. You can. It's better it. that way. So pretty much out the attic. First of all, my man is in the airport right now. Most likely, he's on a layover, stuck before he get home. So he's got a three, four hour layover. Oof. So he definitely got good internet access. He probably's in that 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 uh, airport. Uh, United Sky Club, which I told him to do when you're in the layover. So do that. So yes, shout out to awesome one. Absolutely awesome. So here's the thing. So I'm playing power. I'm like, yo, give me some basic. Because remember, you got to understand, I am not, I've never played Pokemon in my life. Oh, I haven't in a I while. Haven't, I haven't in a while, but I played survival games recently, which seems I have no concept more. of it. Right. So my man, oh, he not, oh, he not in the Sky Club. He's just in the airport chilling. All right. So basically he's like, don't worry. I got you. Let me see where you are in the game. So I'm moving around. He's telling me how to build just the basics. Right? I'm like, all right, cool. So then we run it around. And first of all, I like my character. You know, smooth. The complexion is right. Got my little gold. <laughs> he looks like Cog. I'm yeah. like, all right, this is not too bad, right? Yeah. Cog and Breath of the Wild. So for whatever reason, we jump into oh, yeah, water. Yeah, like the menu occasionally, the, the text that pops up. And like, there's definitely some, there's a lot of inspiration, but we'll get to that later. Yes. So we jump into, into a section where there's water and I come out. Why black people in Power World look like they got dipped in silver? Like this part of our body looks the like the water the gives you this like silver look. <laughs> yeah, is that one like? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> it's mad weird. Me and Attic, I look. He's like, I mean, it is your like, dream. Black. It is your dream with the Silver Surfer. I mean, yeah, that part. But why go. black people got to go through this? this <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna file a complaint. I think that's more of the transparency, like slider on the water yeah, needs to be lower. All skin in water for some reason. Because I was like, oh, you got dunked in the adamantium tank, and then you, when you come out, they gotta shake the the silver off of you, the the metal off of you. So yeah. I'm starting. I'm gonna start a petition. Now let me start. It was funny, but anyway, back to your story. So you're doing your thing. You're building. I want to hear because you 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 advanced level. I want to hear. All yeah, I'm like level this 32, oh, 31, damn. 32. Yeah, I've got like thirty hours in. So you unlock the guns. You you're already. Uh, I'm getting the guns. Been using the crossbow a lot. Um, mm -hmm. The guns definitely kick up the damage when you get to certain points. Like I can pick off low level guys with just one crossbow arrow bolt. So it's very Ooh. ammo efficient right now. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to now. I'm finally finding sulfur for gunpowder, so I can start getting that Ooh. together. So that's what I was kind of waiting on the guns for. Went and did just done more exploring and things and making content. Sometimes slows you down, but mm -hmm. um, you know you've got the base, which can occasionally get invaded. And whether it's right. like well, some of the human guys, Great. sometimes there's like the love monster, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> so it's a lizard. Uh huh. Well, first off, in the pal. Uh, pal deck. Exactly. Well, I'm in there. They no, got the pal deck. Cog Nita. They got Cog, Cog Nita. You ain't Cog Nita. I saw that yeah, one. Yeah, they got him. They got him. Um, but the two dollar super chat. I'm gonna ask. <laughs> Was that normal? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not normal. Abby. Um, but the idea is, mm -hmm. so occasionally it will say like loving fans are raiding your camp or something, and they're these okay. like. Hold on, I gotta send you the. Yeah, send me this. What hold is on. This? How the, first of all, this sound wow crazy. The love monster. That sound wow crazy. Here, this is gonna go into our direct chat. All right, let me see. 
Hey yo, <laughs> hey yo, what do you want? So what if you don't, want? the love monster is pretty much what I would say is got like the head of a dragon, kind of the Ooh. body of kind of a kangaroo is what I'm probably more picking up, Ooh. and then the chest is this big heart. Yeah. Puff. Yes. And I'm pretty sure that can move a little bit, and Ooh. then it's got heart underwear with. Very minimal coverage. Yes. Um, yes. And these are the loving fans. And in the PAL deck, they are PAL number 69. They have a fun with They this. do. They like they, that's that is the kind of epitome of everything. They are having fun with way too much stuff in here. And I think that's they didn't take themselves too seriously with seriously. a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's a point just to where. I have giant guys waddling around my base and then one sits down in a bath and basically is not even in it. I think I saw another picture where the dinosaur looks like he's almost just going to the bathroom in the bath because it's so big and things just don't fit. Um, it's early access, but it's like there's a 50 level tech tree to this thing. And wow. as you capture the as you capture the pals, certain ones will have different abilities. So Fox Sparks, for example, it's the little Firefox. You're going to get a harness for it. And what it, your partner ability is, you can pick the fox barks up and it says huggy fire is what it's called. <laughs> and you literally like your ability is you turn it into a flamethrower. So you just walk around and all of a sudden it's like. <laughs> it's like real powerful early on. It, okay. it cooks. It's it truly cooks. Um, wow. Ooh, I mean, ooh, you get ooh. I went. I, I got a flying mount, so you can get flying mounts, which is a whole crazy thing. You've got ground mounts, which between there's an etheric deer, which is like this like majestic looking white deer with like purple mm. horns, kind of looks awesome. And it's got this like really fast charge so you can cover ground. On the other side, okay. you've got a dire wolf and Ooh. it is a faster mount than most. And if you can get a What's dire wolf, I, okay, I can't get a dire wolf with swift because the dire wolf okay. is faster than most ground mounts Ooh. in general. The etheric deer with that charge like flies, but then it kind of pauses and kind of regather itself. If you could get a dire wolf with swift, it's 30% faster, plus however faster it is, you could probably just like cook, like cover the ground. Oh, they got you. They got wolves. Ooh, well, they like got once you go, air, I have like an airborne. There's some awesome, and, and they look like they're pretty cool looking. Like now, cool granted. Looking. I don't know what's all ripped off and not. We can get into that a little right. bit later. We'll but the that. one that I'm, there's one I saw. It looks like, a, you know, owls have a really big wingspan. Yeah. If you ever look at, like, it looks like this thing's like three times that. When you see it, it flaps this, like, huge. And I've, I've only got the preview because I must have, like, glanced the area that it was in. Yeah, I haven't captured it. Is, it. See, right, but okay, it I is just, like, to... huge, like, nighttime one. And it's got this, mm. and it's just, like. It's in Unreal 5. It's got really big depth of, like, you can see damn near across the map. There's, like, no Ooh, my, clouds my, this or is, fog this is or anything just, like that. Clear that. This is the Steam version you're playing. This is the Steam version. I wouldn't know 100%. about this. I wouldn't oh, know about this. We okay. <laughs> I wouldn't know about this, these grand distances and this great Unreal Engine, but continue. continue. Yes, <laughs> yes. Advantages of fidelity. PC gaming sometimes, too. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Shout out to Greg Miller, who I want <laughs> to slap occasionally. Um... <laughs> He's very much on PlayStation. And I get some yeah, things yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. And on the other side, I was talking to people in my Discord and they're like, it's really hard to justify a PC when a PS5 or Xbox is like 500 bucks. I'm like, I get it too. Xbox it's making the right stuff. decision, by the way, going for this one. They got the mm -hmm. without play. I don't, I don't know. It Bro, missed. Scouting team. Yeah. Yeah. I heard yeah. you. I was actually listening to you guys uh, while I was working out today. Oh, um, cool, cool. But yeah, they were like, yeah, this is on Xbox and Game Pass and it still has. 8 million in sales Bro, and that's just steam that's not even game pass it's but, yeah not to interrupt your country no, quick, it's but it's just crazy like, the, i it gets to the point where i i have my the twitter account of power world or on my one of my browser tabs i have to refresh it because every day or every 18 hours it's my data is outdated because now they've surpassed the new Ooh. sales. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, they had six million. They're like, nah, bro, they've been past that. They did this. They're eight. I'm like, oh my God. Like, this is insane what yeah. is going on with this game. But continue, continue, continue. I want to no, hear no, no. more um, about this. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got, so there are towers that will yeah. have like a, this is where you kind of get a little Pokemon inspiration where it's got like a trainer. And the only one that I've done, it's an electric one. They're chunky. I mean, they have a lot of health, but depending on your build and the multiple pals that you bring in in your party and you could 
toss them out. Like you could throw one out, have them do an attack. And if you see a big attack charging up, pull them right back into the ball and switch and like trade them in and out. Um, and like one of these is just a big giant electric Pokemon. And you got the like little girl trainer who's like sitting up on the top, kind of guiding him. Same yeah, way yeah. you would like saddle up on any of yours. Mm -hmm. And so you have boss battles there. You have like little nice. mini dungeons, which are going to be, okay. uh, well, there's two types. There's like a cave dungeon, which is like a system of caves. They all seem to have pretty similar tile sets, just yeah. kind of done in a little bit different order. The map yeah, is, I think, just, that yeah, I think the, it's, it's not generated, but like you've got, oh, hey, okay. yeah, it's not procedural for anybody. I'm oh, pretty sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think everybody's got the same coordinates of everything is all going to be the okay. same for everybody. But like the, when you go into a dungeon, you're going to see, hey, I've seen this room and this connecting room and this room, they may be in different order, but you will see right. some similarities. They have like little, like dungeon, not even dun just like little kind of world boss fights, but they're almost like this little teleporter on the ground. You go down into, into basically just like a box room with a little bit of cover. And it's just mm. kind of like the, the big tower fight, but just a smaller mm. scaled down version. And those will have leveled up like beefier big ones of whatever that type is, maybe a couple helpers with it. And you can mm. capture those as like special ones. And there's also shinies that wander around the world. So if you ever heard people talk about Pokemon shinies, it's these ones yes. that glisten. These are like rare ones. So they're going to have mm. either more health or they definitely have more size, maybe more attack power and stuff like that. Then it gets into a whole thing where you can start breeding them, which I just got unlocked this. Wait, I didn't know they had this and this. So I there's breeding them now. That. So you can have a male of one and a female of another, and you can crossbreed. So it doesn't matter what the species are. So if you do a male and female, this is how people are finding like certain species in the game they didn't even know existed. So you got like a fire one over here and a nice one over here. You got a couple traits, and they're really trying to get, you know, optimized pals from all the breeding. And you want to know the best part mm. about the breeding farm it's is almost like personas. Okay, continue. Well, I was going to say you got one male, one female, doesn't matter the species. They're going to make something, mm -hmm. but the only way breeding can happen, you have to cook cake and you have to put it in the box by the breeding farm. So breeding will not happen without you gotta, cake. You got to create a situation. You got to, yeah. you got to make the cake. Um, <laughs> that makes it go down. They make the cake, they have a good time, and you leave them alone. What is this, a conjugal visit? What is going on in Power World? Power World is wild, y'all. I mean, you have now, to have dessert after dinner. That's just how dates go. I mean, you got to have dessert. Now, here's the next question. So, the funny thing I keep seeing all That's uh, why I'm not as thin as I am. Dessert. <laughs> yeah, straight up. We like yeah. So, here's the thing. You, I see... A pal, they call, I think called Depresso. <laughs> Sorry, somebody in my chat was like, no cake, no bake. I'm like, oh, God. No, yeah, listen. <laughs> hey, hey I, we, I, we're I, not. It got to be the cake. It's got to be cake. <laughs> so the, Depre the Depresso dude, like, I heard, like, you get oh. the little memos. They upset. Yeah. They mad. They Depresso's so, face. It's hilarious. Just, he's a nighttime Pokemon, only out at night. But just, like, the name fits the face of just. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't it's be hilarious. more. Don't give a damn. It's that's good. And then they just like they leaned so hard into oh, some of these things. Right. I yeah. mean, you've got um, there's like a Goliath and they just tweak like names. There's like a Goliath, Goliath ape or something like that. And it's mm -hmm. like this little kind of. I don't know, it's like an ape monkey mm -hmm. situation. Then there's like a little mm -hmm. chimpanzee thing. Uh, there's mm -hmm. OK, so there's a bee guard, which is like these little bees. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, like a weapon. And then there's the Eliza, the Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So the Elizabeth is like the queen bee. And then I'll okay. have two little bee guards following it around. Okay, like so just on the well, line. the best thing okay. is if you can capture a bee guard, it, mm -hmm. they have this like work suit ability, which tasks they're able to do. And what do you what? know? The worker bee has like seven of them because it can do <laughs> like all the jobs. So the worker bee is a worker bee. I saw the Relaxosaurus. I did. I haven't. I think I may have captured one finally, but yeah, the Relaxosaurus is just like, and that's the thing. Sometimes you're like, Hey, I want to capture him. Well, how do you capture any of the pals in this game? You have to beat them up and weaken them or shoot yeah. them or something. So there's this like, and didn't sleep. Yeah, there's like this little, you know, cute, wonderful plant dinosaur thing. And I got to go shoot it in the face so I can weaken it. And then I got to throw the pal spheres at it over and over or get a better one to capture them. This game is the greatest. Because it's, it, it, yeah, they it, are not taking themselves seriously mm, or any no. level. They have a fun. And here's the sad part. The sad part for the for, for Nintendo, they really watch out, is that the vibe I'm getting from the Pokemon community is like, bro, this is what 
we've been wanting you guys to advance the series. Let's get it out of turn yeah. base. Let's open world it. Now you got some UE5. Yeah, live you action combat now? Yeah. Yeah, live action combat. And, and now you got the multiplayer aspect c cooking. Like, the things Oh, I'm yeah. No, no offense. I'm probably never going to get into the Nintendo circle, so I'm not really yes. too worried about that. If I could right, play, like, I don't know, the next Metroid or something, I'd love to, but that's mm -hmm. 17,000 years away. Um, no, when it comes to, as you said... What Pokemon hasn't done, I don't know what podcast I was listening to. Could have been you. I cannot remember. But it was phrased that, like, Zelda had a was reborn with Breath of the Wild. They have the open yes. world, the stamina, go anywhere. And then you can, the whole system with the recent Tears of the Kingdom with now you've got engineers in here making contraptions and mechs and stuff. Like, they've done stuff. Pokemon has been the same stuff for so long. Okay, long. Turn based, basic yep. stuff, unoptimized, bad runs engine. poorly. Yep. Yeah, bad runs engine, poorly. all that stuff. As you said, you've got UE5, you've got co op. Now, Xbox is four player co op. Steam has actual like 32 player servers, 32, yeah. which I know that'll probably go, go more places. Mm -hmm. The live action combat, like I'm sitting there, I can do an action dodge, like an action game dodge roll out of the way of like an attack coming my. Mm. So I'm sitting here dodging while I'm like, shoot, dodge. Roll right. over here, dodge, shoot, and like, and this isn't a Pokemon game. You're not doing that in Pokemon. Uh, you get, I mean, yeah. you, I've just all of a sudden mount. I don't know if you can go on a mount on a Pokemon, but you've got the 3D verticality now where I'm flying Ooh. around on 3D mounts. And there are some legendary ones. They just, they're so fast. There are some in-game pals that you can try and capture, which are going to be hard with like hyperspheres and level 50 and all that. But Ooh. it looks like. A damn near, it's, I think it's called a jet dragon, not joking, like jet a dragon or something like that. And it looks like it's got little turbines in, like it's like kind of back shoulders or something. So it just, okay. it, it flies through the air zooming. fast. Yeah, it's zooming. Oh man, that's um, crazy. I, I got a question before you, before you go. Cause yeah. um, we talk about the, the, the base building. Obviously, you can put the pals to work. They're doing it. All of them have different skill set. Yeah. Doing that. Now, the question I have is, what happens when you are not attending to the needs of the pal? Because obviously they complain or okay, whatever so it is. I so I haven't yeah. had too much of an issue on that. Okay. When you go through your pal box where you store all of your yeah. pals in your base and you can have multiple bases, the pal box will store them. But mm -hmm. as you go to upgrade your base, it's also going to tell you what things to build. Okay. So as you follow through, if you work on upgrading the pal box, it's going to give you the basic necessities for a lot of stuff. Like right. one of the things is a little hot springs every so often they're going to go check hang in the hot springs. So their sanity is okay. So it's their way okay. to relax. Work. Got you working conditions. Okay. Yeah. So you got, and you can build multiple of those if you want, there's a feed box. So you can always make sure they have food. So if they're like, and you want to make sure, and part of it too. And I think this is one of the things like Tassie was talking about. The pathing is not great. Like the AI path of where to go to do X thing. Not yeah. the best. Yeah. Um. So if you have a feed box, but like, here's this stuff you can work on. Here's this stuff you can work on. You put a feed box right in the middle. They're like, oh, they're hungry. Dink, dink. And they go back. So like my guys in my base, they're really not too bad. Occasionally one will get like a stomach ulcer or, and I think those are like, I think also. literally it'll say like an ulcer and you got to go make a little medicine and heal them up and stuff like that. So there's, I mean, that's like a random thing. I think that's more the just, you, they got care for them. Like there's, there's yeah. conditions, there's ailments. Yeah. For the, yeah. For it's thing. like random ailments will happen. Somebody's like, weekend you gotta give like you know they need to sleep for a while and you can just put them back in the pal box and have them hang out in their sphere and just like recover or okay. you can kind of treat them with like medicine that you can kind of cook up a little bit but i mean that's the idea you want to make sure they're fed you want to make sure they have beds they all have to have beds or they will well, not they be beds. yeah they got so beds they room and board they gotta have room yeah, they gotta board. have okay. food place yeah, to food. sleep they gotta have hot right. springs for sanity so their sanity hot relaxes springs is allowed. i don't know if they deserve that I mean, they got Hot that. Just I just started building fluffy beds for mine, so they just got an upgrade oh, okay. from well, normal. Like up. these are like it with a posturepedia. Yeah, I mean, they went from what looked like a you know a square of like here's a few leaves on the floor. Yeah. So now it looks like a bed better than what I'm sleeping on. So like they're okay. they're sitting pretty now. <laughs> um. So all of this wow. goes, and then you occasionally, as you go around the world, you're going to find eggs. Okay. So you're going to get an egg incubator is kind of one of the special things you can unlock on the far side of the tech tree. You'll get these yeah. like ancient technology points. You get like a little, like you get one when you beat a boss. You don't get a mm -hmm. lot of them. So they're very rare. It's they're like very rare. Okay. 
Okay, this is so you get the egg incubator and all fly okay. around. Now there's a part of the map to the west of probably where I st most people start. And I mm -hmm. went on my flying mount. I was like, hey, I'm gonna go see what's over here. Well, I realized it was hot. What I didn't realize, my flying mount is also a fire pal. So I was okay. on a fire pal in a hot area, and I had no fire resistance armor on. So I was Ooh. just I was basically kind of jumping, like going very slowly, and I went around this whole massive island slowly but surely but while i was out there i think i picked up like 14 different eggs because there's regular oh, wow. size eggs there's large okay. eggs there's huge eggs which take like mm -hmm. two hours of gameplay to actually hatch mm. but what those things will do i have pals that i have never seen from these eggs you oh, can wow. unlock variations from the eggs Wow, um, all these variants in it for the pals yeah there's like there's normally there's this little like hedgehog that's like an electric one well, I got a variant and there's a frost one. Okay. So that's why I was and, like, and for a game that is, I think yeah, Tassie, well, I was going to say Tassie's tweet and he's like, why is this my biggest tweet ever? And it was the one where I think what it was, was an article. Um, got to look it up now because I don't want to say it wrong. Hold on. Uh, so Tassie got a tweet that he that Tassie took had a tweet bl blew Pamela? up, but God only knows how buried it is in his Twitter thread. Um, no. I was today, yeah, I was like, of course, but no, oh yeah, like Outriders devs got hit today, more things got, I mean, Microsoft got smashed today, but I saw Outriders yeah, too. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was basically one, I think he was retweeting, it might have been a Kotaku article. Okay. Um, And it was something along the lines of... Hey, it this is a game that feels like a big trap or something like that. And then all he replied to it was just like, it's $27 and has no microtransactions. Like, mm. what what are you trying to call this game out for? Now, granted, <laughs> there's a whole lot of questions about how it was made and AI and mm. very similar to the world of Pokemon yeah. and stuff like that. Now, granted, oh, Hogue has said... And yeah. and Hoga's has come out and said, I don't really think there's that much of a case. Like there's similarities, yes. but I think the survival game gives them a lot to like. It's a different game. Yes. Oh, uh, at, at its core, yeah. There's, there's so many elements. You have the survival elements, the monster elements. Yeah, you have the Pokemon style throw the ball thing, but that's yeah. not the only part of the game. And right. Pokemon's turn based, right? Mm -hmm. The thing, the thing that everyone is concerned about, which I get which is the creature similarity. Because Attic did show me some Pokeballs. And I, it was like Anubis and this one and Lakaria oh, yeah. and this one. Okay, here's like, oh, the tweet. What? Okay, so, oh, it's your game. Playing yeah. Pal World gives off the impression of playing a product designed to be sold rather than to be played. You will feel like a mark and you'll be right. That's their early impressions. And Tassie's reply to it was just like, or like quote was basically, this game got $27 with no microtransactions. I mean, it's got 48,000 oh, likes and 2.8 million views. Like, that is a massive tweet, but it was just like, oh, and then Destiny Bulletin right under him was like, and Destiny 2 is, quote, free to play, and it's a picture <laughs> of all of the expansions and things you can buy on Steam. Cost, it's that horrible uh, thing, and yeah. it cost $564 to buy it all. Mm -hmm. And also, to end, yeah, and then Tassie was like, I, it doesn't even have the, the... This is probably a more interesting picture for you, for yeah. the angle. Bam. Yo. That's why. <laughs> yeah. So Hilarious. it's now when it comes into, yeah, the egg incubator where you can hatch is cool. Cause as I said, I keep getting, and I found massive when I was on that weird long, like I was basically hovering in the beach. I would go as long as my flying mount would get me. And then I would drop into the water and kind of swim up oh, to wow. the beach, make sure I was cool and not cooking. And then kind of mm -hmm. go along the beach line until I could. Then I got on the mountain. Then it was too hot again. So just the whole region I was in, I shouldn't have been there kind of you thing. Been there. But so oh, there's yeah. this like outline on my map right now that is around this entire like end game area where I hovered the outside. But there were so many eggs out there. Wow. And I brought back a ton. And some of them are like your weight capacity is like X number of pounds or whatever. Yeah. It starts at 300. Mine's up to like 700, mm -hmm. 750, something like that. Some of the eggs were like 10. Then the medium ones are 25. Some of the eggs were 50 pounds. These things were massive eggs. So when I hatch them, all of a sudden I've got this like fire lion wolf thing that takes up my half of my, ba they're huge. So I'm just, mm. so that's like the stuff that you can just randomly trip into. And, oh, wow. but that's kind of the idea of like the egg and breeding. Some people will take certain things to breed together. And there's some people who are also putting together charts and stuff like the community's coming together to figure it all out. Oh, yeah. It is it's pretty expensive. There is way more depth than I would have thought. I mean, with, if you just see the animation, you're like, okay, 50 level check tree. 
half the stuff is grayed out until you actually find the pals right. to get their specific harness, whether it's a riding harness. Now, there are two that crack me up, and they're similar because it's a leaf monk, which is like a chipmunk or a squirrel. Mm -hmm. And then there's the tansy, which is like a little green chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. Both of these have like four or six, four to six different work suitability things like they can mm -hmm. gather and plant and do logging and harvesting and also transport. They can do like five or six different things, but at around level like 14 or 15, they get these partner bonuses that you can unlock for them. One, for example, is like daydream. It's just like flouting little purple mm -hmm. void cloud thing. And what happens is if you get the collar for it and if you have mm -hmm. them in your party, yes, it's a collar. But anyway, I, I know <laughs> they're all they're all I mean, it's a collar, it's a harness, whatever. But like the daydream, if you have four of them in your party, they're mm -hmm. with you the entire time. So okay. instead of like throwing, you know, the, the sphere out and then having one buddy yeah. with you, you yeah. these four are just here. Oh, they with you. They rolling. And then you could throw your fifth main one out and then you're just rolling with an army because those could be with you. So you could do that. Uh. But the tansy and the chipmunk both have the ability to the chipmunk will stand on your head and has a mm -hmm. submachine gun that all of a sudden it just starts to unload if you choose it to activate its partner skill. And the Tan Z right. can be, you know, your partner out there if you throw it out. And if you hit partner skill, it's going to pull out an assault rifle and go to town. <laughs> this is the greatest. Show. I'm telling you, this like is, the greatest it is ever. absolutely ridiculous. Like, that's it's kind of ridiculous. the thing. It is absolutely ridiculous. That's the See, whole let me, let me, point. Let me jump in, because this is for me, like, as Maddie teases me and, and um, Addict teases me because also they know, like, I don't usually do... As an older gamer, I don't usually do the cutesy stuff as much as I, you know, as I did in the past. But one thing you could get me is if you got violence, <laughs> or you got you got some really funny, and you don't take yourself seriously, and you have fun with it. Like now, you got my attention. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, let me see what's going on. So for me, my experience is short. I was got like three or four hours in it, but. Thing that right, I, like. I went long on my on my section. No, my bad. No, no, you because you had. To, I wanted you to. You had yeah. the most experience. I had the least. So my thing is, you know, obviously this week is crazy to be tech and and infinite wealth. At the yeah, it's like you're but, you're gone soon. Yeah, I'm gone. So I was like, let me just try to get some power world in, just because, like you said, I'm hearing the craze. What is this, right? Yep. And then obviously shout out to Travis last week. He's like, bro. I got the preview up or IGN. It's hilarious. You talk about the enslavement watch. You talk about all these different books. So I'm like, all right, let me yeah. get into it. The vibe I got at first was just coming out of the cave was actually a little Breath of the Wild inspiration. I was like, all right. Oh, no. The, the the sounds almost, the font, occasional the moments font. I'm sitting there going, bro. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, people talk <laughs> about Pokemon. I'm like, I'm getting Breath of the Wild. I'm, the way you pick up the stones, just the way the font, like certain things. I was just like, this feel very leak ish but i'm like all right cool a little bit so you do the yeah just a little bit but the thing i noticed lot, was lot. again for, a lot bit <laughs> the thing i noticed right off the bat, bat for me as a person who gen historically does not like survival games like one of the few was like grounded that got me yeah that one and got how you. you now how you get me is what what power world does is they have a series of tasks for you to do it's a lot of hand holding which I like because it was like okay, you're you're, sure you you're a hand holder. You need, you need a little little guide. Be like, sir, where do we go yes. next? Thank you. Yes, I just need yes. to. I need guidance through this linear yes. linear pathway game, yes. and and it's I need linear. to know exactly where to go straight forward with. Please don't make me wander off and figure out my own fun. I don't want to yeah, do that. I don't like them games <laughs> where they randomly, they don't Sorry. tell you ingredients. That was, that was and they want you to get, you know, seven twigs, eight berries, and this, and then you you made a raft or something. Like, like, I don't like them games. Like, I want the game to tell me what I need to build such and such, what you need to do next. And then it, it holds you your hand enough and restricts you to kind of make sure you do the core gameplay elements. Get your little power base, you create a power ball, get, you start mining ore by pressing the Y, but I'm talking about the console experience. Yeah. It's really intuitive. Now, granted, on Xbox, a little framey. A little, a little, a little yeah, framey. I've heard that. So I'm I've like, heard. okay, cool. You early access, but- UE5, is, I will say UE5, I don't think people realize how heavy that engine is. And yeah, By heavy, I mean like- Yeah. It, it takes some powerful hardware to push it. It can yeah. do cool things, but I think that's one of those. Oh, look, it's on UE5. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's going to take a hell of a piece of hardware to run yeah. really well or really, really well optimized. But anyway, go ahead. 
No, absolutely. And, and the thing about it too is like, like, shout out to Robert Joe. Yeah, like I was getting, I was like, this got a little bit of arc survival of vibe. This got a little bit, it, it's survival. It's when you get the Pokeball, yes, it is Pokeball on that <laughs> part, right? That part. But I was just amazed at like when I finally captured my first one, this little cute sheep looking thing. Yep. Lamb and ball. then, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I got him, and then he's rambunctious getting into it with other pals while we walking around. I'm like, yo, I didn't know that they fight for you and do all this foolishness. So I'm like, all right, this this is this is crazy. Other thing I had struggled at first, I was just like, all right. I remember when the nighttime came, came I was like, bro, you got to make a bed. You got to get the torch. You got to do this. You gotta... So it just took me a little while. But once I got past that, I have to say, the onboarding for a guy that never played Pokemon, a guy that does not play survival games, I thought was fairly solid. And yeah. remember, this is an early access game, right? That is six, from my understanding, sixty percent complete, right? No, I've even, I mean, even heard the percentage. I know they're working yeah. on like bigger stuff and plans, but yeah, very much early access right yeah. now. And that's when I say this is early access. I'm like, damn, it's pretty impressive. And to me, the the reason, the thing that you got to look at, the you look I at think the they animals. have their funding, by the way. <laughs> oh, you think? <laughs> right, two hundred million dollars later. Yeah, we got a we Sex. got a bit of a budget. Bro, the thing that you got to look at is why is this thing taking off? So what it shows me is that desire from the Pokemon community or whoever ha that has been wanting a game like this, that been wanting them to evolve. And look, I get it. it, it this momentum is not stopping. It's going to be very curious for Microsoft in terms of obviously they're, they're scouting. They was able to, you know, find this and put this in Game Pass. You know, I, I will say, you know, this when you see inertia like this this early, this reminds me of early Fortnite, early PUBG, early Minecraft. And it's interesting to see where this thing's going to go and where it's going to stop because I have to admit, you saw the roadmap, right? I like the fact uh, that you even got a roadmap yeah. already. Yeah, the roadmap's already. Well, yeah, it's like they got a budget, so they're probably like, all right, let's make the most of what we can. I mean, that's EVP? all you can do. Raid bosses? Yeah. Kyle Arena, Steam Cross, that up Xbox again. Cross Play. Uh, Bro, there's a lot. New Islands, bosses, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's insane. Server what, transfers, what, uh, mm -hmm. New Islands bosses, technology. I mean, that's the thing. Is like they can keep it going. The raid right. bosses would be raid bosses would be interesting because I wonder. It is all about capturing, and if it's one yeah. big one, like do you all get a version of it or mm, right? How does that work? Right? It, yeah. But the fact that they've got that roadmap and literally so fast, and I have to give the team credit as far as the feedback, you know, they, dude, they, I heard they, like, destroyed the Epic Store servers a bunch of times just because of the capacity was oh, I crazy. Believe, I believe they messed with a few servers. Uh, I'm yes. so, I'm solo on, on, on mine. You can yeah. make your world multiplayer if you want to, but I am mm -hmm. currently just solo in mine. I've just been trying to go solo. through... And look, look at that's the good example too because I know your your playing habits. You tend to play solo, and the yeah. fact that you're having that much fun with a game that historically people like to play with friends and yeah. you know that style of survival, survival games. People like to play. Hey, I got the the, the stones. I'll build this. You do that kind of thing. It, it's pretty impressive, man. I, I think look, sky's the limit. If they can, if they can nail the PvP portion and give it extended legs, I worry about PvP in this actually. True. True. I do, yeah, I absolutely. don't know because I feel as somebody who's saying you're gonna be throwing pokeballs at your sorry pal spheres at each other the whole time. Um, I don't I don't know how PvP would go if you just have right. like arena battles and stuff like that. I could see a little bit more for bragging rights and things. Mm -hmm. Um, I wonder how that would go. I really I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's raid, like that. That was bosses, now big world of... bosses like that. I can see like they could probably find. Hey, we're gonna plop a new island somewhere on the map that you guys haven't seen or have access to at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, when you do get there, there's something standing just towering above anything you've ever seen before. Good luck, and you could have yeah. 32 people on a Steam server going for the same big guy. It's some big, mm -hmm. and everybody, okay, bring all your fire guys. This is a grass right. guy, so we gotta go after mm -hmm. him. I mean, yeah, the, the could be a thing. Yeah potentials there and like i said last thing i'll say is that i do like the fact that they made a statement that before they get into the expansive aspect they want to address the core issues and oh, yeah. from a stability standpoint that's good look sky's the limit we got to see look i get the legal aspect i get people with the concern there yep. you know from my understanding the developer has used ai in the past i don't know there's been no proof that power world has used it as of right now but you know even if it did like i told maddie i was like we're at that point and this is the thing that the hardcore gaming community has to understand. We're at that point that gaming is 
these developers are going to use the tooling for AI at some point, whether it be independent developer or not. I'm not condoning getting rid of art and voice actors. I'm not saying that. All yeah, I'm yeah. saying is there's going to be a game that, that's going to hit massive. I literally predicted this like two months ago. I had a conversation with Maddie about AI and gaming. And I said, it's going to be big and people are not going to care because they are having so oh. much fun. And it, 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 and it, it, again, I'm not saying Power World is. It's not proven right. yet. We don't know. We won't know right. until whatever happens down the road. Exactly. But it is interesting to see. But look, I'm, it, it's just a phenomenon to watch. It's, ab- it's absolutely a phenomenon to watch. And it's just, I've never seen anything like this in, in a while. It reminds me, like I said, that Fortnite type energy. But we'll continue to, to, to monitor it and see what's yeah. going on. There was actually a really good discussion. I don't know if you guys ever listened to Play, Watch, Listen. It's Alana Pierce. Um Troy Baker hasn't been on a while. He was on there in the past. Mike Bithel, right. um, mm-hmm. oh, he's a game maker. Yeah. And then oh, yeah, Austin that. Wintry, he's the composer yes. for Journey and other stuff. Absolutely. Path- I was actually playing through, playing through Pathless on my Steam Deck. Oh, um, yeah. Arrow with the, th- with the girl. Yeah, yeah. good game. Mm-hmm. Um, Bithel, Mike Bithel and Austin Wintry have just a really good back and forth discussion about AI, the uses coming from different perspective. Um, Austin Wintry has a really good perspective coming from the music industry because you've got the concept and again, listen to it because they do a better job talking about it than I do, Mm -hmm. but it's the idea of he will do Austin Wintry will do a bespoke soundtrack for a game period. It's what he does. Mm -hmm. Damn, damn good at it. It seems, um, he said, there's other people in the industry who, Hey, I released 500 tracks last year, but they just released these tracks to places like to, basically stores where you can go buy them and they hope some of them get licensed. Yes. So then you get to quantity over quality or quantity over a specific use case, or maybe this fits here. Does it get picked up? And then it kind of comes around to the art side. If you use Photoshop for a thumbnail right now in 24, mm-hmm. it's got it in it. Yeah. I can absolutely. make stuff that like, I mean, they, the I've seen advertisements on football games, I think for this thing, like it's straight up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's in there. So then they talk about, well, Hey, now artists who need to work, However much harder to be able to keep the work down that they have. We know the market, which we'll get to, is just an absolute nightmare at this point. So then it's like, hey, they need to hit this deadline or whatever and be like, well, I've got all this done. What if they just select this corner of the portion and fill in, hey, put a forest background in this back right corner. And all of a sudden it comes together. Maybe it's a concept artist. Maybe it's just one thing here. And it and it helps. That's the point where there was an interest. The, one of the quotes in there that I probably won't forget for a little while was, how many times does a stolen car have to be sold to be removed from the crime? Mm. Think this conceptually it's like apply that to ai it's like okay so ai right now is not creative it is not right. a true like singularity yeah, intelligence you, that makes it on its own just, it's just scraping yeah. the internet for Absolutely. inspiration and algorithms and puts all that stuff together so it's like right now ai doesn't really function without all the stock photos and everything else and what everybody else has created previously so it doesn't function without that but then what is the what does it say about the artist who's like, hey, I'm currently making this thing. I've got this. I've got one more corner. I've got three other things to do. Can I fill this in? They do that and they move on. Where, how, where's the where where's the line for the harm? And oh, that's of course, of course, so when you talk about AI, it's just like it's we're in a weird place right now. And I am not going to claim to be an expert. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. And it's like and I get the point of, hey, is AI going to I mean, you've seen script writers and stuff right now. It's like, right. You've seen the scripts that AI is writing. They're not great. <laughs> They're not really in fear of anything. But it also right. comes to, my wife has said this too, is AI right now is only getting the information it has from humans. Absolutely. So the information it's getting is from what has been put out, out there by us in the first place. It's not getting its own experiences. So right. if you go to uh, some actor, uh, at one point I'd listen to, again, I don't have all the quotes for these, but it's like mm-hmm. they said, what advice would you give an upcoming actor? And they're like, go live, go travel, see the world, experience different things. So that way, when you get to a point where you're called on to like have an emotional call on this emotional experience to act, you're not like, I'm going to go be like that person be like, I'm going to have the experience that I went through already. So it's just kind of a unique piece of, and it's that thing. It's like right now, there's nothing that has its own personal experiences or unique thoughts. It is just gathering information that already exists. And that's kind of the weird place we're at. Yeah, we're not at the Skynet phase yet. <laughs> no, you know Hollywood references. I think not. Hollywood be yeah, does play a, a a role into 
some fear mongering. What was that? I zero to sixty five point seven five eight. I heard. <laughs> you know, <it's> <laughs> you know. So yeah, like you know, it's one of those things that I look at. Look, of course, I'm a techie. I'm always interested in where the industry is going to go. You know, that kind of stuff. You know, definitely tantalizes a certain part of my brain to say, okay, where is this going? How is it being utilized? There's one part of me that says, look. You know, from a tooling perspective, to make menial tasks easier. That's, also, for the, that's the thing is like the tools, yeah. The tooling, right? And then also from a smaller developer who does not have that big publisher backing, does not have that bag, and let's just be honest, they may not be able to afford that talent. And then you're telling them to say, okay, we can utilize this to make a lot of these assets or things that we normally wouldn't have the resources to make. I get that. On the other side, I do understand the ethics. I do understand. Yep taking jobs away from people. Obviously, we, we've had amazing voice actress. Obviously, we had the great Marler on. You know, we've had, you know, a lot of people who are creatives. And the only thing, listen, like you said it best, it's AI is what is ingested into it, right? It's that's, that's all it is right now. That's it's all it's not, a tool. And it's, a tool yeah. can be utilized in good, and it can be utilized in bad for corporate greed. So I'm aware of that. And it, my thing is there has to be at least some form of regulation on it as well what is ingested well did you see on um like it was death it happened on another reddit first and then Mm -hmm. i think it happened on destiny reddit where they trolled they finally they trolled the ai and they like they made up articles on reddit and they made up a boss and name and everything like this and all of a sudden some news article bs thing fake news or what fake news Mm -hmm. article and again where it's just like ai is scraping reddit and like pumping out an article but hey here's a guide about this boss but it's something that doesn't exist so it's like the fact that that can still be done is showing you how it all works which is very exactly which shows it that it's not perfect and it can be manipulated in in certain aspects so you got that but look at the end of the day i'm just going to be very clear with the people and i know a lot of people want to hear this like it is come we are here we yeah. are here and it is going to continue to come and the, the thing now is the implementation the implementation how is it utilized so yeah i'm just monitoring it it is a very fascinating discussion you know and, yeah, and the last thing i'll say is this we already there. Like when you people have to realize, like when you call a doctor's office and you don't talk to a person. Oh yeah, we've been doing that for a minute. We've been doing like we like well, like you, automated you, chat for Best Buy or Amazon. Same thing. Hey, what is this? Bro. And it fills in. I'm like, can I talk to a human? Because you know exactly. when you're working through some of that stuff, and it's just all algorithms. This is just a different level that we've reached at this point right now. Exactly. Last point I'll say is again from an innovative standpoint, you know, it's like, we can't also be like, Hey, I want my horse and buggy. What's this car stuff? Like you can't do that. And then you also they actually talk about that in the podcast too. They kind of mentioned that real talk. Right. And then also I remember the day you go into a target, you go into a Walmart and there were 10, eight to 10 cashiers, right. To cash you out and whatever, whatever. Oh yeah. And, now it's all self, up, yeah. and what happened? There was that self check aisle. Oh, hey, check this out. It's, hey, you know, you could get in, get out, do your thing, whatever, whatever. And now there's one person that may just monitor the six to eight check. Oh, yeah. Late <laughs> nights and stuff like that. They have one person monitoring like two rows of those things. And then you have everybody checking out. You got one person labor for an entire grocery store up in the front. Absolutely. Normally, you'd have like at least three or four to manage everything that's there. And you have a store that's able to make more money. Now, Walmart has an issue where they've had so much theft that they yeah, are actually yeah, trying yeah. to pull back how many self checkouts they have <laughs> because <laughs> that's just been so high. It's be like one for you, one for me, one two for, for me. Yeah. <laughs> how many bananas did you get today? Well, I got a whole bundle, but I'm going to say one. <laughs> like, human manipulation. <laughs> yeah, like that's the human factor that gets to be part of it too. Absolutely. So that's it's fair. like, yeah, I'm. It's like I'm with you. It's like we're definitely in this point where I mean, when you hear Chat GP, Chat GPT, and the stuff that I mean, I have. People that I know, it's like they'll mess around and be like, hey, what is a resume or a cover letter or any of those things? And they get the basics from that mm-hmm. to we get to make sure it sounds good. But it's like, that's just there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you want to know what type of algorithm right now for all the people who are unfortunately we're going to talk about that are searching for jobs? Mm-hmm. Like they go into this machine, like all the job resumes. And then if you don't have all the perfect, just like just the words in there, it doesn't matter if it's written well, if you have amazing experience, right. something that just like checks all the algorithm boxes is all it is. Mm-hmm. And you get to that point, then you can actually maybe move on to the next step. But you got to get through the random machine first. And like yeah. you could be the most qualified candidate, but if you don't have the right formatting or a word that's supposed to be in there for some reason, it's not even they're not even reviewed that way anymore. So it's like it's yeah. it is all over the place and it's well it's gonna be one of those that i 
as a tool, it can be beneficial again in the right way. Just like, hey, a screw to a power drill. First time you're a homeowner and you buy a power drill, you're like, what the hell was I doing for however long I did not have this tool? Oh my God, like game changer. So again, Mm -hmm. as somebody who's like a creative, whether it's, you know, an artist using Photoshop and I could pull in this thing, give me, okay, this is kind of a cool, make me like a cupcake castle. Cool. All right. All right. Now let me give me a little inspiration. Let me pull from that, whatever it may be. And it was from the uh, commercial is the cupcake castle. Um, <laughs> but it's like, we, yeah, it's, it's the degrees of so there is so much gray in this black and white field. Yeah. There's so much gray in the middle of this. It is, it is right. so, it's so weird to see where it's all going to go when it's, I mean, you have, the SAG and the writer strike yeah, and all of the pushback yeah. over AI and likenesses and now nah, I will say I don't like what they did to, to the voice actor. I think the um I know you talk about the oh SAG, no the vo- video the game voice actors or something right yeah that yeah. wasn't cool where they were like yeah we signed off on this and yeah that didn't we, seem right guys, guys were like we didn't sign off yeah actors, like, we didn't sign off on no, this no. like we got sold out that was cool and that's the corporate greed aspect that we got to be fair about which could be utilized on that but yeah sorry to interrupt you but I know what you yeah. mean okay. and it's also this kind of balance of like what is something costing more how much is corporate greed how much gets into profits. I mean, that's kind of the thing. It's like, oh, inflation's out there right now and you get in all the politics and stuff, but like, what's inflation? What's profit? And why is the bonus for the CEO 17 million more dollars versus, you know, and it's just, it gets into a whole mess of stuff, but it's like all of these things just get to be this continuing discussion of how valuable any person's work is going to be anymore is just kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. We're in it. We're in an inflection point. Um, generally, historically, what would happen is there's a new skill set that has to be learned, right? Yeah. So is that generally, but again, not saying that that's going to make it one to one for any potential job that's lost because of AI. Right. But it, they will develop generally new skill sets or ha- have to be developed to kind of adapt to where the industry ends up shifting and going and stuff like yeah. that. So we got to see it. It's definitely we're definitely in one of those times. That's, where we just that is a good way to it. phrase it, though. It's like you would. That was where, again, it was Mike Bethel and um, Austin Winter. When they were going back and forth, they were talking about like the Henry Ford thing. It's like, that's different. You're going to go from, you know, making the car one by one to your new skill set is you're going to go work on an assembly line. Right. It's a like a lateral. It's not so much. And then when they talk about AI, it gets to a point where it's destructive to the job market because it is taking pieces out of the equation as opposed to yeah. moving things around. So that's again, really good listen, by the way, like I, I they always have random discussions on there, but this one this week specifically yeah, like was one, very fitting. Um, so yeah, go check that one out. Valid points. Valid points. Um, yeah. Well, in all of this random crazy discussion as well, unfortunately, Twitter has been very depressing for, yeah, I don't know the entire last year and a month. Um, mm-hmm. Today was a big one. Because multiple, I mean, unfortunately, like I saw Maddie say it too. It was the mm-hmm. Black Forest Games that's working on the last Ronin. They lost fifty percent oh, of their studio, oh. and we that game looks at the end. Oh, that game sounds like it could be so cool. Um, so you've got that one. Microsoft was nineteen hundred today. Jesus. Yeah, that's um, slow problem with and part of the the ones was microsoft games not specifically microsoft so it was the entire unannounced survival game from blizzard the whole team is shuttered lots of community managers and this is the thing i mean this is just today's one i don't even know the other ones that i haven't mentioned but it's the Community managers. I mean these are like hey I was a 12 year you know animator or something I'm like and like somebody with that much skill and it's just like whether they're too expensive for a bottom line or a budget or other things mm-hmm. you're sitting there going I'm like oh so you're a, a, a brand new animator out of college entering the market and the other dude who's applying for the job has been doing this for 12 years and you're competing with them it's just mm-hmm. it I feel like it's getting to a, a horrible zero sum game stuff like right now it's horrible mm-hmm. um like last year was as as we all said there were so many games that came out last year that were all absolutely freaking amazing yeah. On the other side of things, I have the problem of the fact that I think we're halfway, the amount of layoffs in January yeah. are halfway to what all of 2023 Bro. had. Bro, that's like, insane. That's, that's and again, insane. tech wider is also getting it too. 
whether it's mm-hmm. Meta or Microsoft or Intel, oh, yeah. doesn't matter. Like oh, tech yeah. everywhere is getting layoffs, whole, but just the in industry. the industry in and of itself, it's mm-hmm. seemingly getting worse. Oh yeah, no, I'll jump in. Uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty shocking the day for me because. Um, oh, and oh, by once, I was sorry. I want to say one thing because I just saw it. Somebody was just like, just in Microsoft is closed with a three trillion dollar valuation for the first time, and then what? The tweet above it is dot dot dot, and it's just like. Now, granted, yeah, yeah. valuations of companies and budgets and things, that's yeah. not how all that's the financials not, work. They're not right, the same, right. but you kind of look at those numbers and you go, huh, really? Okay, that yeah. makes sense. That, that's where the frustration is, yeah. right? because it's like the video game industry seems to be, you know, at its all time high as far as quality games and wrecked profits, right? But yet we're seeing all these layoffs and all these developers and all these creative creatives losing their job. And it's heartbreaking, you know, studio shuttering, you know, closing and stuff like that. You know, what I would say about this is on one half side of it, I always knew and was not surprised that layoffs would be inevitable after an acquisition because on, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be cold hearted, but no, there's always true. going to be redundancies. There's always That's going part to of be acquisition, yeah. like we don't need two HR departments. Right. We don't need, you know, two customers. We don't need extra payroll. Like you don't. Yeah. I mean, That's there's. Just, that's been going on since the end of time. So I don't want to be empathetic. I mean, you know, be cold and not empathetic on that. There's the other side that the sheer volume, right, of what we talked about, you know, a whole game, a whole studio, whatever gets shut down, awful. And then we, we obviously we see the profit and stuff like that. So I've been on both sides of this. I've been a, a victim of layoff. I, I, I know what that feeling is to now wake up and you're like, you got to figure out what the next move is, right? Yeah. It's tough. And, it, and and here's the thing. As much as we love video games, this this was always one of my fears. I, trust me, I was blessed to be able to work in the game industry and at Meta at one point. Fantastic. But one of the concerns is always the volatility of the yeah. games industry. And it's like, man, can I be at a company? It feels like the day of being with the same company for, you know, more Oh, no, four, that years. is 100% a thing because you're a little older than I am. Yeah. But even my, I'm 40 mm-hmm. and you're a little older than I am, but it's like our parents, age and 47, but like mm-hmm. my, my parents are way older than me, but even like the stage in between for sixties or whatever, yeah. the, the idea of working at a company for 25 years, getting a pen that does not, that hasn't existed for my entire life of working yeah. and stuff like that. Those things like don't exist anymore. So it's like, yeah. honestly, you're working against yourself. Generally, if you stay at a company for longer than about two years, because it's the way you get your increases. Typically, if you're able to is going between companies. So there's no yeah. reason. Generally you'll see people go over here and then they'll come back. I mean, not to probably point the wrong person out, but Joe Blackburn probably did that. Not intentionally, yeah. but I mean, he was he was on the raid team before. He went to go, cannot remember where he went to, but when he came back, he's now game director. So you're yeah. making those moves and you're getting the verticality, not by staying at the same company, yes. by transferring back for and forth. Yes, I am for right. And, but here's the thing. And here's the thing that's even scary in the industry because the games industry is such a, if you, if you don't have the benefit of working remote, it is such a centralized thing where it's like Washington, California. California. Yeah. Yep. The rest, it's like Li- baby yeah. Pockets. Yeah, you're like a little bit in Austin. As you said, there's yeah. a little up, but there's one major studio up by you. Um Yeah, bro. It's insane. And and, and the thing is, I, I have we have devs on IOP. We have devs on, like bro, these people are some of them you hear the story, bro, they're giving up their well established yeah. careers, moving their whole lives away to this these you know these areas that we we say was it the raven that was a prime example of that like a call of duty testing studio or something like that i believe so and, and I, then I like they got that. shuttered or something i feel like i remember yeah, it could have been but yeah three three today they, they, the news came out because the unions um thing came out today talking mm. about i guess the three studios that were protected i mean protected but they weren't affected because they were unionized and now a lot of people are looking at this like hey is this to push now for unionization to try to protect it, it it's a, it's a good discussion right I mean, because that, that's yeah yeah that's the only thing that really breaks my heart is just to see so many people, you know, obviously we just came off this with Bungie, right? We, yeah. We've seen everything that Bungie went through and, and, and it's rough. And to me, it's like, you see the tweets, you see the human element. Hey, oh, yeah. I don't it know sounds like we figured out now. they still have about 1,350 employees as of now still. As of now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They were up to 15, 1,600 or something like major. Yeah. Major. And the other thing with this one that was surprising, major heads at the top 
you were leaving. Like Mikey, Mikey Barra like floored you, me, man. You. Wasn't that like his dream job to work at Bungie? If I yes. remember an interview at some point. And then the fact and that he chose his was more voluntary. He wasn't let go. It sounded like he chose to leave. Right. If I read that interview I mean, correctly, I can't, I, I, don't, I may not I have, spoke, or maybe it's as, like you yeah. left kind of thing. I don't yeah. know. I spoke to Mike. I know him. I spoke to Mike to, to kind of, you know, check in on him and just say, Hey, I heard the news, you know, and my, my, this is my feeling, you know, like you said, I know Mikey Barra personally. Like I, th- Mikey Barra is a gamer through and through. Don't yeah. think he is just a corporate suit and that's it, right? So Mike is the guy I used to play. Remember when you got me 2017, like PC Destiny mm-hmm. for the first time and you put me on, I'm like, yo, 60 frames. Oh my yeah. God, I'm coming out of console, pleb life. I'm like, oh. So Mike was so on it. This was before Fireteam Finder and all. He had a system where they would have, he had a dedicated raid team. They ran me through Last Wish. They ran me through all this stuff. And it was a system. You'd sign up on the app. All right, who's the six? Here's the time we're running. Like, that's how real he is. Same yeah. thing with Diablo. Now, Dia- even though he was hardcore Destiny at the time, this was during the days when Destiny was on Battle.net. You know what I'm saying? And we used to do this type of stuff. But he was even more a Diablo guy and a Blizzard guy. So, that was his blood. That's what he lived. So I don't know if you saw the Jason Schreier report where Jason came out today. I haven't read all of it, but I saw it. But pretty much said that, look, when he spoke to Mike during, remember when they had the, the BlizzCon and him and Phil came out? That's what's so surprised. Everybody felt like they are retaining him, you know, that they're going to be a unified front and they're going to move forward. And to me, I thought it'd be an asset, especially as a person who's running Blizzard, who's now acquired to make the transition process easier, yeah. seamless, right? You want that when two when corporations merge, especially Mike, who's had like 20 plus years mm-hmm. Xbox, Microsoft experience. It's yeah. like the perfect thing. So to see him go was kind of surprising. And And according to Jason's report, when Jason spoke to him, he was kind of like, at the time, during the thing, he said they would have to get me out of here, kicking and scratch, drag me yeah, out. Yeah, it sounded like he was that's not going to go anywhere. That's how much I love okay. this position, yeah, and this is when I... things are good. So he's like, "I'm good." This was back then when he said that. So when I see this, yeah, you're like, I'm going uh, to have to assume questions. Yeah, that, it, this would lead, he. This was not necessarily something that may be his choice, or he was put in a position where it's like, okay. There's no future for me here. I have to go kind of thing. But I, I did speak to Mike. Again, I know him. You know, I, I spoke to him. Like, we're cool. We're, you know, we're good acquaintance. Yeah. I've, I've met, met him a dozen times over the just to check on him, on you know, just see how he's doing. And he just said, nope, he's good. But his main thing is he just feels for the teams, right? Yeah, now. no. All I mean, people, yeah. Somebody in his that position, like whether it was you were asked nicely to leave or not, he is mm-hmm. in a point where high enough in his career, he will be comfortable Oh no, he'll be fine. He will be fine, and that's kind of the thing. I got he's he's okay. And that's kind of the thing. It's like somebody at that level financially should be fine. Um, If you manage money, even reasonably, you're totally, totally fine. Probably for if not ever at his level. But so many of the teams, the animators, the community—they lost a lot of community managers, support team. I was just see so many of the people that help these studios have that human feel to them. The community yes. managers, the support oh. team, all of, I mean, Bungie went through it too. The security mm-hmm. team. I mean, they're dropping. Let, let, let me cut you a Go, second, No, you're good. Like is, those are, those are the weird ones. Know. Yeah. As a person who's not familiar with, um, you know, Blizzard as much. I'm not the Blizzard guy. One thing I heard is that their customer service, like some of the best, like it's very high quality. I believe Now it. you hear rumors of obviously at layoff, generally that stuff kind of gets outsourced. Yep. You know, and then who knows what the quality is. Continue though. I just wanted to say no, that no, that's that's I've pretty heard many stories about that. That was just like some them. of the stuff that I've seen. I mean, I, I I try and look at who all the people I try and just give them a follow if I can. I don't have like a reach to be able to share, you know, somebody's resume or anything like that. But I try and look at who's going. There was like community managers and stuff like that. Yeah. The whole the one and we talked about this a little bit before the show. Mm-hmm. It's never been announced, but it has been speculated and rumored for a while. And there was even like a little bit of concept art I saw floating on Twitter today. The Mm -hmm. unannounced survival game from Blizzard. That whole project, Odyssey, is gone. Shuttered. Now, what did I, was it six years in the works or five or four? I don't know how long it's been in the works, but a long time. Like three or four years at a minimum, if not more. People have been working on this project within Blizzard. So again, you have to apply, you have to work in Blizzard. Not an easy thing to get into for a studio. They're one of the better ones. And then 
you have four years of work on something like that and you will never have anything to show for it. That's another bad thing about some of these projects don't don't see the finish yeah, line in yeah, games yeah. that get canceled and stuff like that is somebody has a resume where they can't even show what Facts. they worked on for four years because it's mm -hmm. you know under nda classified or whatever and they can't mm -hmm. show it but it's like what'd you do well i worked there for four years on a game now granted for me also it's like everybody's gonna have different opinions about blizzard but diablo Three had its issues. Four came back swinging. You know, the seasons are hitting pretty good. But when they do mm -hmm. put out a game, it's generally solid. Overwatch yeah. 2 is kind of a flop, but Overwatch 1 really did things well mm -hmm. for a long time. World of Warcraft is still the one that has survived this long, which is freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had RTS, Heroes of the Storm. Didn't, like, win over the mobile market. Mm -hmm. But I was able to jump to the Heroes of the, of the Storm and kind of get it without feeling overwhelmed. Right. Typically, what they would do is they would take something that's probably a bit a bit much, a bit too complicated and not mm -hmm. dumb it down. They kind of do the apple of we're not going to be first, but we're going to try and refine it for a broader audience. Right. So right. if Blizzard was going to work for a survival game, you see them blowing up right now. Power Worlds one oh, and Shrouded yeah. just came out literally today, yesterday. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but I mean, survival games, a bit. Valheim has had huge numbers. You've got. Uh, v Rising. I'm trying to think of something. There's probably Lego Fortnite. Literally, that was one that had, I think, a million players on that first day. The rifle games are a niche. And if Blizzard was going to do one, I really wish we could have seen that one I'm because seen it. yes, that's the point. thing. It's like, point. I really yeah. wish we could have seen that yeah. one because sometimes Minecraft, obviously. Um, yeah. yeah. It's just when they step into a genre, they tend to do it with a lot of refinement and also a massive budget which leads tends to lead to something kind of cool and unique. Now, is it always going to yeah. land perfectly? No, but yeah. the but a, a Blizzard survival game, that'd probably be pretty freaking yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was tantalized. I remember the rumors. I remember the last BlizzCon, and they were people were like, yo, they might show it. I remember that. And then all of a sudden, oh, they just announced the thing, but they didn't talk about, they didn't talk about it or announce it. So, yeah, it, it's unfortunate, man. And, and, and just, this, again, the sheer volume of layoffs... <laughs> You know, at Microsoft, you know, anybody who lost their job today. I mean, my thing is, again, I've been there before, so I've been trying my best just to signal boost that I know a lot of other developer friends who are like, hey, we're hiring. And I'm like, yeah. all right, cool. Let me get this out, you know, to try to get people to land on their feet because it's, it's not easy. And then, you know, the thing right now is, you know, the reasoning, right? Well, obviously, you know, I try to tell people one thing that happens. Shout out to the cops. They, they're, they're going through <laughs> it right now. <laughs> but um, one thing that people don't realize is that COVID gave a lot of these corporations fool's gold. And what was happening is because you had the influx of people at home, engagement is up. I was like, Numbers paired, paired with one other thing. Finished finish the thought. Paired with <laughs> interest it? rates that were very low and now are extremely oh, high. So you have of exactly course, what you course. said. COVID, huge player place, influx of players. Absolutely. And interest rates like my wife and I refinanced our house at like probably almost the lowest you'll ever be able to get it to. And now it's the other side. Now we're over seven and still hanging there for like 6.8 to seven for base yeah. interest. My online savings account, mm. like not like money marketing, just online mm. savings account. Normally the ones, if you go to like Chase or Bank of America or whatever, they're like 0.01%. It's pointless. But if you at least mm. do an online one, it was like 1%, one and a half. It's at four and a half percent right now. And it just does nothing. Like yeah. that is a base minimum for interest, which means everything costs more. So costs loans more. and everything costs more. So anyway, Absolutely. back to where you were. No, good point. So it's like you have that, you have, you know, record profits and you're sitting to yourself as a corporation like, oh, wow, this is the new normal. Uh -huh. This is, oh my God, this 45 is 45% percent revenue miss. <laughs> let's, hello, mm. let's ramp up. Let's hire more. Right. Because look at what we see now. We got to anticipate this growth is going to continue. That's what, again, the fool's goal during that part. Right. And now. People start coming out. We start coming out of the tail end of the pandemic. People start going out. Engagement goes down. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, man, I have all of this workforce, not a lot of profit, not a lot of revenue anymore. And now you got to sit there and assess, OK, if we cannot continue. Right. With this this volume and that's that we the, have, this, and that's the hard financial side, exactly what you're saying. And that's the financial side. So I get it. I'm not trying to justify it, but it's just like this. I still think we're like, to be honest, like a year or two away before we get 
through this recovery phase, maybe possibly two years before we get into that, uh, you know, recovery phase with the industry. And it, it's, I think that's what, a part of what's going on here. You're seeing the everyone's cutting costs and, and cutting positions and doing all this other stuff. But it just sucks because it's like, damn, the games industry is so profitable right now. And it's just like we're going through some of the worst job cuts ever and you know that was one thing i was very proud of with the whole you know new york game Awards thing i did we did mention it yeah. at the top of the show and and to give back to understand that even though we're celebrating games right now you know we here at the new york video games critic circle we want to be clear of all the people developers that lost their their jobs and stuff like that and that we are going to we're going to acknowledge it it's not just hey celebrate video games and don't worry about the, even though the people that made this game may no longer be here right <laughs> that's the hard thing some that. of the games that yeah. got awards last year some people didn't have jobs that were a part of those games that's really sad i actually kind of wanted to shout you out on that one and kind of let oh, you um yeah i saw on twitter if you guys don't follow cognito he was uh New York Game Awards, uh, you and your co-hosts were up there presenting. Um, yes. Probably one of the biggest ones, and I would have been, you know, fanboying too. It's all the picture with Neil Druckmann. Oh. I mean, if you want to talk about a studio head that is known specifically now, he's oh. one of them. And oh. I, how, what was it like meeting him? How was he? Neil, let me tell you right now. Sometimes you know in life where they say, don't meet your heroes. Yeah. Because you never know. Yeah. Like, Neil exceeded every expectation and then some is like this is a real dude and i got a chance to break bread with him like four times during that we had lengthy conversation and look first off off the bat extremely down to earth the guy's super approachable and what's funny he admitted to me he's like hey man i'm a bit of a you know introvert i really don't you know i'm alone I'm a like, lot of a lot of them are that way no i mean yeah. like that's kind of one of those you don't ever expect but yeah yeah he's like he's like, i'm an introvert he's like i'm, I'm nervous i said bro you gotta knock so we talked before you know, backstage VIP stuff, and we talk after, during, and first of all, his speech was amazing. I love what he had to say. I love the credit he gave. Is it everyone. anywhere to watch? Yes, the links up. Go to New York. Okay. Uh, what you call it? I, I give it a white website. Yeah. Go to um nyvgcc.com. So nyvgcc should be dot com. Let me just make sure. New York Video Games Critic Circle, or maybe it might be the Critic Circle itself. Or just Google New York Video Games Critic Circle. And then yeah, because yeah, we got to get that, get some some shine on this, man. And uh, yeah, from there, you can actually see, there it is. So it's basically, it's nygamecritics.com. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you'll oh, hit, hit the yeah. tab. Yeah. And then you'll see, watch live on Twitch, watch live on YouTube. That'll take you to either page and then you can see the game or 13th annual game was there so yeah his speech was amazing um he pretty much talked about you know his, his journey being there and, and he came, bro this guy came from an intern he snuck into e3s just to try to get into gaming awesome. you know what i mean and then you know shout out to my man jason rubin the original you know owners of naughty dog took a chance on him and jason's awesome so you could tell they were tearing because jason was tearing up in his talking basically during a speech of all the people celebrating Neil and what the last of us meant to them and what uncharted meant to them. And, and, and just to cat King and Neil had a moment because people, I know King is Xbox front line and I get it. And he's, but he goes, he, I, 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 the last I, will, of us. I was going to say, I was like, King goes, King's real for the right game. He always says, yeah. Yeah. When it's, so. yeah he's like, that's my greatest game. He said, he would never take that away from them, regardless of how he feels about his, PlayStation does all the line and all that. You know, the line of his so his his feelings on other things that PlayStation does. But when it comes to Last of Us, when it comes to Neil Druckmann, I remember the day he called me. This is King King David called yeah. me after ending Last of Us and was like, "I said, so how was it?" Because he played before me, and I'm like, "He's like, I said, did it meet expectations?" He's like, "Bro, and there's a part where I put the controller down and I'm shaking." And he's just like, the, the t I, I don't want to do certain things. That's where the game yep. put him in a place. So when we get it back to Neil, you know, he's having those discussions. But the main thing with him is just, again, just a down-to-earth person, a person who does actually feel the the negativity from this from social media. He admitted it to me. He's just like, look, you know, I tell all my devs at Naughty Dog, like, hey, stay off social media if you can. These, a lot of these people are the absolute worst and oh, you know yeah. keyboard yeah. warriors suck oh, especially yes. for those moments but they really suck. so disrespectful you know and obviously you know his family was there and stuff but you know, new york game awards was amazing um again celebrating the developers of the building shout out to Baldur's gate they pulled it off mm. get, got a chance to talk with larry and those guys are awesome nintendo was in the building obviously you know for me an honor to 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 host the initial opening yeah, did you get to meet to, reggie 
introduce Reggie. Oh, the boy got an introducing for Reggie fees of me. So it's a dream come true. We were living in a fever dream that night. All your That's heroes awesome. in a place. And, and the main thing I like that the New York Video Games uh, Do a Game Awards does and the New York Video Games Critic Circle does is it's not just talk. It's really giving back. We gave up. The mayor's office was there. Oh, damn. We have scholarships to students and undeserved communities to, um, th- to basically promote video game curriculum and how gaming can actually be good and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So I'm proud, you know, uh, and, and, and we gave the developers time to speak huh. and get their awards yeah. and, and, and give the creators the shine that they deserve. You know, last year, I was in Bungie, was in the, Bungie won one, one, one last year <laughs> before, but this year, I'm trying to remember who won live service this year. I know Cyberpunk won DLC, but go check it out, man. It, it's really cool. I, I was I was super proud, you know, and then we we announced um we were able to I was able to present the all the laws. We we did a presenting as well for the uh VR AR game of the year awards. Nice. And as Asgard's were Asgard's Rath, Rath, Rath got it. Yeah. I mean that yeah. yeah. Travis yeah, gave so that puppy a ten, so I mean Yeah. No good stuff, no yeah. reason not to. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. no, I mean Last of Us is Controversial for some people, and then the leaks about two, and then people who right. like have thoughts about two that never played it because their information about the leaks, which is wrong, and all that. I mean, all that's like a whole mess of stuff. But mm-hmm. um, it's a it's a rare one. It's a rare gem of the effort put into the experiences, the little stuff, the acting, the story is very special for a lot of people, and it's hard to go through that story. But it is, it's a good story. And that's one of those things, like, you can tell the care that I think Neil had. And they got the right director, the director of Chernobyl. Did you watch oh, Chernobyl, by the I way? Not yet. Oh, I'm my God. Not, I know, I it's know, five I episodes. Know. That's all it is. It is five episodes. Um, that was the perfect director. As soon as I saw Ooh. that director get announced for Last of Us, I was like, oh, this is, they're cooking. Know. Like, I already know they're cooking on that one. Bro. Funny story in his speech, except the speech, he kind of took a shot. He's like, at the, at the, what is it, the Emmys or whatever, where they give the awards for the shows. What, what's the show that beat about? He, the, Emmys uh, would have been t- uh, Succession would have probably beat Succession. him for drama. He was like, yeah. hey, Succession, you can't take this one from me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny the way he did it. It was so cool. Because you can tell he wanted that I mean, I heard, I heard Succession went out on a, like a massive high for their, se- their gotcha. uh, series finale. Uh, mm-hmm. Craig Mazin, there you go, also did the Hangover movie. Yeah, that's quite a switch. <laughs> yeah, Craig yes. Mazin did the Hangover movie, did Chernobyl, and did Last of Us. Yeah. Like, episode three of The Last of Us is like a perfect episode of television. Oh, bro. I mean, it's like, that amazing. that episode is, it's one of those that, like, from start to finish, it's just like, it is a movie in and of itself, because it's the longest one. It's like an hour. Um, mm. It's, like, special, and that is one that's one of those times where I'm sure like Neil and Craig worked together and they went way outside of the game to make what that was. And you got to see even more and you can tell Neil is probably like is part in his mind, kind of like, um, like a Kojima. They want to make movies. Yeah. They want to yeah. make movies. I mean, yeah. death stranding, the same thing, like the four hours of cutscenes or whatever is in that game. It's like, they want to make movies and it's one of those weird things. It's like, I'll watch a movie and then I'll play certain games and it's it's the experience that you have as you just and it's not always all the way, but you put yourself partially in that character's shoes. You've been in those shoes for, you know, 15 hours of walking through crappy streets and tunnels and hunkering down behind boxes to get away from clickers. And then it's that final moment of doing whatever it's doing. And it's just there are certain things that games are capable of that other forms of media can't do. Yeah, and it's right. one of those things that a lot of people don't. A lot of older generation, especially, will probably never experience because they will choose not yes. to. Yes. Um, they just they choose to be like, oh, it's just that's just a video game. I'm like, we're telling some stories over here, and I've been in this thing for like 20 hours. We are experiencing things that you may never see in a movie or on like, TV. That's the beauty. We talked about that too, and he behind the scenes, and he was basically saying one thing that really he's proud of is that, you know, like say for example, we had a hardcore games, we're playing it to see non-gamers say, okay, well, I'm not playing, but I'm going to watch you. Like, E, what's that? Like, and stay invested, right? Because yeah. it's like, they're so connected to the characters, you know, kind of thing. He he has ushered that that era in as well. It, it's it, He's got masterpieces. And we forget the Uncharted Oh, no, stuff. the whole like, Uncharted we, series is, like, yeah. I mean, you got two with the iconic train, which now made it into, but damn near made it into a Tom Cruise movie. Um, yeah. 
yeah, four. Just yeah, it's the the depth that they've added to games to say that story matters, writing matters, acting matters. I mean, you have. You know, a lot can be said in facial expressions. I mean, what's the whole thing? Like what you say is oh. only what well, the whole thing you say is only like 15 percent of what you say verbally. Body mm -hmm. language is like 70 percent. Tone is so much more. So when you go Absolutely. to getting the fidelity, fidelity that we now have in games, the motion Ooh. capture, the details yeah. and all those things, when you get into seeing and that was. That's why for me, the games that you do see the expressions, you do see that like the pain, the anguish, the suffering, oh, the happiness, yeah. the ups and the downs that you can actually witness. It's like we're not in like photo realism, but they're getting to that point where yeah. it's like even on like P the magic they pulled with Last of Us when it came out, like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Uh, but I mean, all of those, you get to those moments in games of. I mean. Ori is still one of the one of the damn games that didn't say a damn word and both have made me cry. And I, I'm like, yeah. both of them. And it's like, oh, there's not a word said in those, but it's like the, the moments that happen. And obviously I've got some empathy to some stuff, but it's, it's all of those things. So no, it's like, I, if nothing else, if the success of Uncharted 1, 2, 3, Last of Us, two, last, all, if that type of success of one studio can help an industry have a new level of appreciation and also put money behind those story-based games they're they're worth it and i think that's yeah, like that's a huge thing if if he's been one of the pillars not the only one but if he's one of the right. pillars that has helped that piece of the industry to be like hey it's not just shooting and guns and action and all this other stuff there mm -hmm. can be more and it can be appreciated yes. if done well Absolutely. and i think that's no it's like yeah it's like when you get done playing man when you get done playing two it's like same thing. Ooh. The moment, the moment in two, when like head head flips the tails, you're like, I'm what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. and those, and that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. Yeah, it's real. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. that's yeah. That would that 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 night had to be a blast because oh, yeah. Bro, I was, mean, Reggie Reggie alone is like iconic for Nintendo, and you. Yeah. It's kind of the only Nintendo face I've known for a long time outside of Shigeru Miyamoto. It's like kind of the mm -hmm. North American face was Reggie on yeah. so much stuff for so long. So the fact that you got to introduce him is bro. Like I would have been fanboying a little bit, and then Neil, yeah. if he's if he's if Neil was as cool as he sounds, and just like also. Yeah, the conversations you did. No, that's yeah, that's a bro. that's one to remember. Night to remember. I'm living in a fever dream. I'm 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 blessed. And yeah, we I remember I think we all came together, me solve King and Addict. We just like like yo, we, do we realize what's happening right now? Like we are super proud of each other, gave each other the group hug, the bro hug, you know. It just it, it just those moments, you know, that it where the hard work pays off and then you're acknowledged by your peers and again, can't I, I'm very thankful. I, 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 as much as I can play with certain things in gaming and the gaming community has treated me well. And I'm always going to be thankful. And nights like that justify all the hard work, all the, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff in conjunction with doing something that's actually positive yeah. for, in, in, in creating change and stuff. So salute to everybody's support. I would, I never ask, but if people could go, I put it in the website, New York Game Critics, nygamecritics.com. Go check it out. If you want to support, you want to donate, fine. You don't have to, no obligation. But go check out Neil Druckmann. He's got his speech up. They've got the entire Game Awards. If you want to see your boy intro the show, you go check that out. See the Lords present. And, of course, um, outro as well. So great show. And you get to see who won. So it was competitive, man. Some really good uh, categories. Last year was so crazy. I mean, granted, yeah. January is off to a hell of a start. Right. Now, I got to ask you. Yeah. When you saw the reviews come out, what went through your mind? So I'm going to make a little bit of a shift now. We're going to talk That's about. Good. So I played Prince of Persia. That game is fantastic. That Sounds got a phenomenal. Dude, yeah. it is. I mean, it's an 87. I would be. It's a nine in my book. Easy nine. Mm -hmm. Not quite a 10. Couple. Like if you have a hard 10 point scale, it is a nine. But it is a damn good nine. I mean, that's when I say damn like Ori nine. and the Will of the Wisp is amazing for it's got type platforming the visuals and everything like that are cool uh and the story obviously hits you in the heartstrings i would say the story on prince of persia is a little weaker but where it passes like orion stuff the combat the exploration the platforming Ooh. like the gameplay is so good on prince of persia cool. that like mm -hmm. Metroidvania, whenever that thing comes to Steam, like for a Steam Deck or wherever you're going to play it, because it's only on Ubisoft Connect and other places right now. But no, Prince of Persia was so good. But then, so that was an 87 on Metacritic or OpenCritic or whatever it is right now. 
now we're really cooking with fire because you got Tekken 8, you got Like a Dragon. Hold on. I want to see if I can get the title right. Ah. No, hold on. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I had, I've had. i been listening to too many of those discussed at the same time. Um, both sitting at 90s on Open Critic. And we're talking like 70 reviewers. So, I mean, this is the average. It's where it's going to land. So both of those. And I think they were like an hour apart yeah. or something like yeah. that. How you yeah. doing? <laughs> <sighs> I'm finished. I dreaded this day. <laughs> I dreaded this day. Because what's funny is I had a great feeling about Tekken coming in. And I was like, look, they, they are listening to every single thing the community wants. And then let's just get it right at the back. This thing is UE5. It is the best looking fighting game I have ever seen. So it, puts, Mortal Kombat. It, it beats Mortal Kombat? Because, I mean, I, I'm you. asking. That's the only other one. Love you, Mortal Kombat. It's it's not it's it, I mean you're not that like I mean but you're you're, you're beat you're beat like you, beat. you like have been beaten yeah, gotcha. you have been beat like that's it no it's not a Mortal Kombat's a beautiful game but it just it's not messing with tech tech and especially the the facial expressions the animations the the backgrounds the the effects the cinematic like it's to the point now that the core game looks like a cinema when you do a wind pose I've like, heard some of those like zoom ins and camera moves oh, and stuff just it's else. crazy full roster um. The thing that you'll like as a person who may not be into fighters, what again, you know, how we complain about our beloved Destiny sometimes, but this is the best onboarding for someone who does not play fighting yeah. games. I highly recommend you guys try it out if you've been has an inkling like, of, hey, that looks cool, but I don't do for no, 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 not only do they have. The, the the way you play they have the obviously the special style for guys who don't know the complex movement what i we consider a dad mode right where you got you have that aspect then they also have an arcade mode which definitely appeals to people who want to learn gameplay mechanics but they do it in such a way that you go up to certain characters and say okay well i'm struggling with getting up off the floor and da -da -da, i can show you some stuff and then you go through this kind of repetition and stuff like that the character roster is insane the thing that tekken has been lapped in they have addressed which is the cinematics and stuff like that so having the story and having the whole game's characters implemented into the main story tekken really has never done that even though they've pioneered endings in, in video games for fighting you could turn dad mode off absolutely dad mode is an option that they give you from the very beginning and when you start the game robert jones so yeah you don't have to play that that at all okay i gotta so, ask um, i don't know the full cast i'm on the website yeah, is, yeah. Hey, is Hihachi in this well if you play tekken 7 <laughs> that's the thing now i also heard there's actually yeah. a story recap because you got like devil gin yes. and people thrown into volcanoes and other stuff all over the place so more than likely well, i remember that is, so it's probably yeah. been a long time since i played yes uh kazuya had like a devil mode like back in three or something maybe yes, i remember yes 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 uh devil gin yeah, looks at, cool yeah. by the way oh yeah yeah T kazuya is at full devil uh gene power yeah, okay. he's he's basic. Basically, this is Tekken. You're gonna like it because it's Tekken the Avengers now. I Everybody heard it was like also coming... I, somebody described this yeah. as like Tekken slash anime. Yes, like it's they anime, they went yeah. It's yeah. anime. Yeah, and I love it because it's it's getting more to a casual base. You got to get them in. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, and one thing about Tekken, they don't take themselves too seriously too. They'll have fighting bears and foolish oh, yeah. and stuff like that. We got Panda well, but... King, the dude in the oh, mask and stuff. The game now, granted, is somebody who pulls off King's extended grapples is always satisfying to watch because it's gush, gush, whoosh, 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 whoosh. and oh, they just yeah. keep like flipping wrestling and slamming and they never oh. let you go and i'm just like yep that's cool yeah. to watch but i'm dead it's cool because <laughs> again we know the skill level evolved and then the thing about tekken which is really cool this year all they've designed the characters to all be distinct to have their own personality like Steve yeah i've heard Fox, you mention monster. now granted yeah. i heard also the distinct um oh who did they sh yeah Ooh. lee Ah, yeah, my guy. You mentioned Lee. him, I think, on Defining Duke, because I re I remember playing as Lee, and then Child. now he's gone to, as you said, like tech bro kind of guy. Tech bro, goofy. They changed his personality for and some. Then I mean, who's the who's yeah. the fancy Frenchman now? Oh, that's the that's that's he's like the new Lee in terms of style and personality. Oh, Vincent. Uh, uh, what's oh, his name? Vincent. 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 Is it Victor? Is it Victor? Or is it, is it Vic Vincent or Victor? I'm looking. Victor. I'm looking. It's all, something with a V. Victor, but he's Victor, played, yeah. Victor, he's it's like a played, silver fox Frenchman guy, kind of. Yeah, he's oh, he's okay. the John Wick. He's played by uh, Vincent Cavalier, which is, I believe, um, 
Oh, he, this guy that does He's all the guy in Ocean's 12, movies. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, talking about. I remember seeing all that. Bro, concert, they yeah. got they, they, the bag, the marketing bag that they put down on this game. Yeah. Well, Tekken is spending the money this year. The budget to go all out with AAA production. Okay. Ooh. You got to tell me one, though. What Let's is go. the story behind Yoshimitsu? How, why is he this armored devil? <laughs> how, where does, how right. does he exist? How does this happen? Yeah. yeah. So, Yoshimitsu historically is part of this, the Manji Ninja Clan, which is kind of like Robin Hood guys, right? Which okay. is, you know, steal from the rich, give to the poor. Now, he had, from my understanding, the reason why he's got all this crazy suit armor and all that stuff, he has some type of terminal condition. And then this know. doctor in the character called Dr. Boskalovich, who actually helped make Brian Fury and make that Elisa girl, the girl with the flies with the wings with the chainsaws. Oh. Those are his creations. So Yoshimitsu is one of his creations so gotcha. to speak yeah that that that's to help yoshimitsu extend his life because he's part robot part that sounds like you know. uh what is it the wolverine with the mm -hmm. uh, adamantium samurai guy yes um, so okay. that yo, that's yoshi's story he's in i gotta see okay I, paul I, I, I looks weird it, paul looks like he's going on hard times going through super you know yeah dude why what's up with the homeless biker haircut like this is a yeah. weird because I remember Paul with a straight up, yeah, big tall, straight like, up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I was like, yeah. and my buddy played him, so I got my ass whipped plenty yeah. of times by him. Shout out, shout out to Robert Jones. Yes, I played Tekken 3. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember. I, don't I haven't played one in so long. I don't know. I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing something. is like, I got enshrouded. I have like four days to try and play that. Suicide Squad, I am going to jump in. I got to know. Mm -hmm. I really do. Of course. Um, Helldivers is not that far away. Yeah. Like, what happened to the start of this year? Why did it have to go so hard? Insane. In, in, yeah. insane. Like a Dragon, Tekken 8, uh, oh, and then tomorrow. Like a Dragon's going 90. Or tonight. And yeah, people both are saying of, infinite. Yeah. Okay. Infinite wealth. Yeah, I was going to say 90. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we already had. Yeah, Last of Us Part 2. That was sitting there at a 91 as well. Prince of Persia at a 7. Or at a 9, 87. Um, and then, yeah, mm -hmm. Suicide Squad, Helldivers 2, Banishers of, cool. of Ghost of New Eden, uh, Ultros is this, like, goofy-looking, uh, Skull and Bones on the 16th, there's an open beta yeah. coming for that, Pacific Drive on the 22nd, uh, Sons of the Forest is coming to PC, Final Fantasy yeah. VII Rebirth you gotta find some time for, like, Bro. Oh, this, yeah. that's two months. Thank God! That is two Final months! Shape. Thank God the final shape oh, got delayed. man, dude, it would have been swallowed up. Honestly, that's probably... Yeah. Better fit. Would not that, the probably fact that it's coming out in summer is a probably a benefit. Yeah. yeah. If it was trying to come out next to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you got Ooh. these couple out there already. No, I mean I don't honestly think it would have been a great spot for I don't know if there's that much. By the way, Horizon Forbidden West coming to PC for the complete edition Ooh. on March 21st. Ooh. And then 22nd. Yeah, so I'm never going to get to play Forbidden West again because on the 22nd, then you oh, have yeah. Dragon's Dogma 2, Rise of the Ronin on the same day. Also, Princess Peach mm. Showtime coming in hot. Yeah, Princess Peach. Uh, Princess Peach. You got the Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles because there was that game, the Falconeer or something like that. It might have been an Xbox game. Mm. Now you got like Bulwark Falconeer, which looks like you got some like cities going on. Yeah. Uh, and then we don't have a whole lot announced post like March. But yeah, start of the year going way too hard, man. Bro, way too hard. It, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's insane. Like I said, as soon as we end, I'm going right on that Tekken. <laughs> I'm getting my, I got things to get to hit up. But, is it uh, out yeah. now or is it now, like tonight? Now. Okay. 6 p.m. for my understanding. Oh, you. Eastern. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. now. So yeah, that's what it should be now. So go. So let's that, see how long we can stretch this podcast out, guys. No, so we can... no, not at all. Not at all. Let's, get to, <laughs> let's get to Destiny. What was going on? And let's get going. <laughs> uh, so for the world of Destiny, we did get a little yes. info today. Yes, so we've got uh, the winning armor, mm -hmm. which was for the wizards. Mm -hmm. Come on, load. Why is Bungie load? Hello. Hello. You besides that loader? Uh -uh. I don't want to refresh now because I have the page up, so I'm going to leave it where it's at. Okay. That's fun. Let's um, see if I know. That's too neat. Hold on. Let me see. Just pull it from Twitter. There we go. Finally loaded. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had the vote last week, which was kind of the main thing. Okay. A couple mm -hmm. things happened last week. We'll recap. Right. Because I don't actually think we really talked about those because we were talking to Jared about the Bungie Foundation. By the way, Bungie Foundation yes. game to give drive past two million dollars. Really? Like, holy crap. Let's still go. going. By the way, if you're still looking mm -hmm. for emblems or being part of my raffle, you can still donate every seven dollars gets you an entry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that is going until the end of the fourth. Uh, we're at fifty two sixty six for me right now. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. But honestly, like for m- I, my overall rank of the amount that I have raised so far is number. I'm forty two out of everybody. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> no, I was like. Scare is at like 17,000. Above is at 15,000. Crosses at 23. Leopards at 27. Grenader Jake's at 37. Jigsters at 48. The work no, no, no. I'm just like, no, I, I did way more than I ever thought I would have. I was so happy mm-hmm. to do it. But I'm just like, the amount that all of these creators have oh, yeah. helped it's raise insane. is just nuts. Mactix oh, yeah. is close. Light.gg is at like 10 grand. Mactix is almost Ooh. at 10 grand. Uh, Cheese Forever. Cheese forever. Cheese forever is twelve thousand right now, which is fantastic. Wow. Like, like it, they're coming out hard. Stadia, Stadia, Stadia Ooh. time, Stadia time. Banana. He uh, did a stream with Fallout, what? and I think when he had certain like wheel spins, he had to mm-hmm. eat bananas. I think he ate way too many bananas. Wait, when you say eat bananas, the fruit. Stadia, wait, 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 hold on. Stadia time was on camera. Stadia time was on camera here. Or he had Wait, a mask reveal? on. No face reveal. Ah, it was here down, and then or he had his like um. Some How do you eat mask bananas on. if we can't see his face? Like, just you know, just, damn it, stadium time. What's funny? Me, me and Trav was uh, was teasing. I think you were with me. No, no, it was me and you. We we we've seen the reveal. <laughs> oh no, so I we're like no. We yeah, joked that like, this bro. is like one of the better dressed. Like yeah, it's the most handsome dude. dude, yeah. yeah like what like, the hell, you man? Think the way he acted is if he can't be on camera. But I'm like, bro, like what are we doing? He's got here? a voice for ra- he's bat. got a voice for radio, and he's got the face for camera. Like he's yes. he's he's good. Yeah, he's um, good. He's but good. yeah, honestly, like it's all going to the iPads for kids. Check yeah, out the stuff so that good. that does. Last week was so crazy. The Make a Wish they released that one where they mm-hmm. talked about bringing them in. If you saw the video, um. And then, so last week's other news besides that, since we didn't really talk about it, the Glimmer Cap's going up to 500k. All right. So we're up. That's on the 30th. Yeah, 250 to 500. Right. Uh, it took Glimmer for these days, though. I'm trying to think. Like, well, I mean, you're Glimmer? getting rid of shards and stuff, so Glimmer's just yeah. more part of things. That's all it yeah. is. Uh, the helmet right. no longer stays on, so you can actually customize your character coming up before Final Shape. There will be a nice. character customization. As Tassie said, it only took him 10 years. Yeah. Fine. I'd like to never. And then there was voting on good wizard armor and evil wizard armor. So the winner of the wizard armor is Titan, good wizard, mm-hmm. warlock and hunter, bad wizard. I don't know which one you wanted. I'm so disappointed in the warlock community right now. Did you want the? Titan. You wanted the I wanted good wizard. I okay. wanted good. Yeah, and I'm like, because I look at the Titan. Like I look at a Titan. The Titan looks so clean. Titan looks so I'm cool. glad so, I got the good because that's what yeah, I wanted. But I feel like all I saw on Twitter was bad wizard. And I'm going, all it's right. Like, okay, it's not that bad wizard is horrible. It's just that it's it just like, no. Uh, like, here, here's your picture. Your clean one. accents. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, Zentho. Here's I'm on the right. Let me see good one. Yeah, let me look at good one. Sort of get. Yeah, it's it's something about good wizard that really gives you that wizardry. Like I'm in Hogwarts right now. Yeah, you're, like, yeah, you know well, truly yours. The hat's the right shape. The hat is clean. You got the, the long skin. robe in the front. Like the yeah, it's just no. Yeah. I mean, I would have like I thought good was the I hunter. Like, I could have gone either way. It, the titan the looked. Killed. The evil titan looked like a cowboy. I don't know why it still yes, looked too much like a cowboy. So the wizard fit better up there, even if it is chunky shoulders. Hunter, <laughs> I feel like. Evil might be better with the wispy cloak because mm-hmm. he almost has like an elfish, like the boots are pulled up a little too high, almost like yeah. kind of three musketeers look just in blue. Yes. But yes. the warlock, I thought I could have gone either way. That's why I was actually kind of curious. Yeah. But I'm t- disappointed with the warlock community again. But you know what kills me about bad wizard warlock? The hat looks like like it's giving me like hobo vibes, like he's broke. Like it's uh, like I don't know. I just don't like the drooping. Hat. I, 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 yeah, thank you, Outset. It's like a homeless fit. Thank you. That's what I don't like about it. it, it the, 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 the good wizard is very clean and it's very, the edges are sharp and nice. And you know what I mean? Like the Titan is clean. I ain't going to front. The Titan is clean. Yeah, I somebody cooked on the Yama. Titan. I like it. Yeah. So I, I, I'll miss, but you know, again, yeah. not, not too bad. I, I'll deal. I'll deal this time. I've seen worse. I've seen yeah. worse. Put it that way. Uh, starting <laughs> on January 30th as well. Uh, besides mm-hmm. the 500,000 glimmer cap. So the face customization will come before final shape at some point. They got gotcha. five months, whatever. Or mm-hmm. February, March, April, May. Yeah. 
Um, on the 30th, it starts our Riven's Wishes, which you can speculate yes. if this was supposed to be in the season, if it was moved out. These are weekly quests with a high risk objective in the Dreaming City, such as completing a Legend of Lost Sector, oh, whoa, oh. or a dungeon. Upon completing these weekly, weekly objectives, players can return to Mara to receive a wish token. And each week you can use this token to a prize from one of three different categories. Choose a red red border last last wish weapon. Oh. You can get a red border raid weapon. You can get exotics from the year of lightfall. If you're missing anything, I'm pretty good on those. I'm pretty good. Uh, and then you can also get miscellany, which basically it's like you can get the lost season of or the lost memento and the dawning memento. So you can get the all black memento or you can get the ice memento. I could ice out my um my my my, my crafted choice with mementos. If now I'm, I don't know okay. if you get to pick, or you're just gonna go category three, and then it's one of those. Because I can tell you, if people right. get like an ascendant shard and they're going for a momentum memento, they're gonna be pissed, especially if they're yeah. limited. So yes. I'll be curious how that goes. You got six mm -hmm. weeks to play through them, probably one a week. Moments of mm -hmm. triumphs comes back. Um, nice. I always end up getting the moment of triumph shirt. Yeah, I gotta um, keep the tradition. But other than that, there's going to be this year. We look a little broke this year. We look like the budget went down a little bit on on that 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 playing gray. Yeah, that, that playing that gray. I don't know. That's well, it's like heather gray, which I don't mind, and I like the logo. Yes, because it's like the dragon. Heather gray doesn't look doesn't have to look bad, but for whatever reason, it doesn't. Even if the logo's good, I feel like there was just. It's, it's a little more, this. yeah. It's like there was just back to this. more and kind of clean, yeah. 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 And then, yeah, you got too. No, I was just gonna say it's like so. It's there. I mean, I'll probably get it because I, if I knock the stuff out. Oh, by the way, you want to know something? I'm gonna round out our podcast come final shape because if I hit five thousand dollars raised, which I did not think I was going to do, I told them mm -hmm. I would play Hunter for the final shape. Oh, wait, for the whole campaign? For the whole campaign. I'm going to be wow. a hunter for the final shape. Wow. What are you going to do with yourself? You? I got to train a hunter over the next four months. I got to learn how to things. play this class. I got to start paying attention to Xur. Yes. I got to collect my exotics. <laughs> ah, no barricade. You're going to be out here. What? I'm going to have to learn to go invisible. I will have wow. things like golden gun and one-off supers like left and right. True. So there's some benefits. Little barrage. Yeah. You get a little, little nice. Oh, I think right thing. now it's golden gun celestial. The, the boost on celestial, celestial is too good right now. I've crazy. Heard. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, but yeah, yeah I, I got to go hunter. So it's, uh, yeah. I mean, new, this is for a good cause, super. but I hate you all. What? Hey, we hate the new super, though. The new um, traveler supers, light supers. What's the hunter one? I think the hunter one was the, it was the one where you warp around. I didn't love the yeah, hunter yeah, one. Like, Oh, you didn't like the wood? Okay, okay. Like the Titan gets a freaking throw three throw. Yeah. I finally get my like big damage you, range super, and, and I'm not gonna play it. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. welcome, but thank you also for helping raise five thousand over five thousand dollars for game to give. So for a very good cause, but yeah, I'm gonna be yes. struggling. Yes. I'm gonna be yeah, secretly sneaking in time on my Titan quietly. Um, yeah, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Right there's now. also one more thing they've got. If Guardians all together, this is one of these arbitrary thresholds, if we hit 7,777,777 enemies killed with swords, we're going to unlock the Geralt sword emblem. The little icon kind of looks almost like a sword from like 8-bit Zelda. That's what it reminds yes. me of. Yes. And then you just kind of have a compass up there. It's like, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure over the course of the next four months, we'll get it, but I'm not too worried. It's dangerous out there. Don't go out alone. <laughs> yeah. And then as Jared said when he was on the show... February 1st, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific, so 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, they're going to be doing a big stream. So a bunch mm -hmm. of foundations, Twitch channel, they were doing a stream right now. Did you see the, um, it's the three, the Mexican artists who did the ghost shells that they're up for auction. Mm -hmm. They're custom oh, painted. Nice. Yeah, really yeah, custom. Yeah, yeah. I want the day, the day of the oh. dead one looks legit. I like that yeah. one, actually. That yeah, one's always very cool. So those are legit. Uh, everybody's like, Iron Banner comes back. I don't care. Competitive Crucible rewards. I'm like, okay, you're going to give them a Sin and Alloy, sure. Again, way too late. I feel like those are things when, when the community is like, hey, could Trials have like a Sin and Alloy and a Senate Shards drop from the chest or whatever? I'm like, that feels like the easiest thing to say. Yep. Why would you, that, that feels like one of the easiest things to just go, here, 
I mean, you did go flawless. One would think that gets rewarded the same level, the well, same people, equality of a nightfall, which would be the farm high GMs end. in like less than two, like time, people farm yeah. GMs in twenty minutes when they get to farming them. So if you're skilled in PvP, yeah, you should easily be getting some shards and alloys and all that stuff. So, and this is only comp. This isn't even trials. So yeah, they're really trying to but push. The best people I can do right now is I put up when I play trials. I put on my go show. And hope some, uh, uh, what is it, uh, the prisms drop, because I put that on. But yeah, they've been a little better with rewards as far as um, the weapons in trials between rounds yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, they're getting but, better there, but yeah. I'm like, just give the but currencies. Yeah. Like, if you're give PvP the person, the get the currencies. Yes, please. Seems seems like an easy W. I Wouldn't agree. be so hard. Well, that covers Destiny in six minutes. <laughs> six minutes, second. The so next week, we'll see what's going on with the wishes. Man, mm, what yes. day is that? Hold on. That is, uh, what is it, Tuesday, right? Next Tuesday? 30th. I think Suicide Squad comes out. Where's the time? I saw the drop. Suicide. Ooh. It's the time of release. And it's one of those weird things where Steam somehow comes out later than Suicide Squad WB. Is that not the right Twitter account? You can't find it. Well, maybe it's Suicide Squad game or something. Suicide Squad. Or do I just need to go to like Rocksteady actually? Duh. Oh, you're right. Rocksteady. Yeah. Rocksteady. There you go. Uh, okay. So this is one of those annoying things. So midnight local time, which I think for them is UK. So mm -hmm. it'll be. January 29th, 9 p.m. Pacific. If I'm okay. on Steam, I have to wait till 10 a.m. the next. 10 a.m. Well, it's going to be noon for me. I got to wait like damn near 12 hours just to play. On, I'm going to play on PC, but. Of course, of course. How are we feeling about it? I want to see the story through. Okay. Um, I did play the alpha. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. And. I think the writing was fitting for the characters. Uh, I had a, a literal chuckle out loud on one of the moments. Um, just kind of the story implementation. The cinematics are fire. Ooh. I mean, Rocksteady did not slouch on those cinematics. They are high fidelity. And we're talking like just Alan Wake level of detail cinematic. Just freaking fantastic looking cinematics. Um, just the textures and the so many things. There's a character that came in in the little alpha that I got to play and I was like, oh, and just all the outfits look great. So like, I'm not worried about cinematics. Um, the voice acting is well done and fitting for each of the pieces that I've seen so far. I think those pieces are going to be okay. My wonder is the seasonal, the seasonal live service idea because the new playable character is going to be the Joker in season one begins yep. in March. You've got a new playable environment. My question is, will Suicide Squad, when people play through, play the story and all of that stuff, is the loop to the game going to be enough? And this is like kind of the Avengers question. Is yes. the loop going to be engaging enough that when you exhaust the current option, when season mm -hmm. one comes out and then however long, it's, and that's probably going to be quicker. People might play that one, maybe. But then season mm -hmm. two, do you come back like five, six months after launch and go play some more Suicide Squad? That's, I think, the hard Good one question. to know the feel of. Legs. Yeah. yeah, it's the legs. Like, you're going to have a new playable character. You got new boss fight variants. You got some new weapons and gear. I mean, you've also got, you know, I'm going to, there's decent skill. I mean, there was like three different skill trees for each character. So there's a fair oh. amount of depth and stuff. There's loot and levels and all of those things. It just feels weird. And I think it's the live service piece that I just don't know. It's not saying it can't, yeah, but, but I've, it's yeah. really got to earn it. And I, it's, it's weird to think of myself saying like in May, you know, maybe if there's nothing coming out in May, who knows? But like, hey, if you do one in March, okay, you go three months. June, mm -hmm. obviously we'll have final shape, but maybe it's late June or early July or something for that next season. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, hey, am I going to go play? It looks icy. So the Mr. Freeze saga, am I going to go play that? I don't know. You don't know. It depends on the loop, right? It, yeah, I get it. I get it. it that's, it's, that's kind of the weird. I want to play. I will like. I want to get it. Play through the story. Experience that. So that's going to be probably my goal on whatever Tuesday that is. Figure out what the wishes are. When I'm done with that, go experience. Uh, 
May as Hellblade 2. That is true. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, that is about a seven to eight hour game. So that's like one good stream for me if I'm really into it or two. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be big, but Hellblade 2 will be good. Um, I was listening to you guys talk about Avowed, actually. That's the... Yeah, yes. Talk the comedy. The, the community had thoughts. They 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 felt. Well, no, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like we didn't really talk about that too much because I think that was right. That was I did my charity stream, then the Microsoft thing. I watched that before we did the podcast with Jared, and we haven't really talked about that. Mm-hmm. There were parts of I'm not the Obsidian guy like you are. Yeah. So some of it looked interesting the perspective and stuff like that. I'm curious. I know you guys love like the dialogue and the characters and none of that stuff was shown. Combat's not really their strong suit. It sounded like, so I mean like it, they did, they didn't put their best foot forward. It sounded like I, I would agree for anyone who was on the fence or were not interested. I don't think that yeah. was the most. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to play it either way. Cause I'm curious. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, it was indie looked really good. I will mm-hmm. say a little bit of the combat has me wondering on a little bit of the feel. And it was a Have lot of the played Wolfenstein New Order. Haven't I know I should. That's uh, the thing. And, and, and I, I, the only reason no. I want to interrupt you is I listen for 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 someone seeing Indy in first person, I can understand the trepidation. And, and Not even fully. him in first. There were oh, okay. moments that I don't care about that because it was like okay. the first third. I don't care. That's a choice. Okay. So and honestly, it was you or somebody else. Again, I listen to too many gaming things. I get them confused. Somebody was like. Well, if you do it in third, it's just going to be compared to Uncharted all day. So the first and right, third, right, third right, and right, right. I'm like, that's fine. I don't really care. Mm-hmm. It was the way the whip felt. The whip really? didn't, feel, it didn't feel way? right to me. Really? Yep. That was interesting. And as the whip is going to be like a big piece of it, mm. that, that was the one thing. Now I'm not saying it won't get there. No, just right things. now, that, you, you're right not now, that, that was part. the thing for me. The whip, like so when it would, when he he whipped the wall as a distraction, got the guy over. It looked then so cheesy to me. Really? Yeah, that's one of the like oh, the like the art, the detail, the cinema. Like it looks mm. like it's going to be a grandiose game, no question. Oh, yeah, yeah. High it's, detail, it's fidelity, big like set pieces, all that mm. stuff's going to be there. For me, it was just like. When he would like whip a dude's leg, it just looked weirdly disjointed. Interesting. It was just Did one of those little things. Cap when they literally was, they were, they were rounding people up and dragging the actors. But I saw a little bit of that too. But it was just like <laughs> oh, there were certain things beating up their actors. No, I know. I saw. Actors to get the I'm just saying, whipping and dragging. My my one reaction when I watched it just full speed. I haven't no, gone back. I haven't fair. gone back and That's rewatched. Fair. But my full That's speed, fair. it was like, hey, yeah, you're gonna have guns. I know Wolfenstein. They got their shooting, but it was just mm-hmm. th- something about the, the whip. For me, it was a weird one. It's like it's gonna be. I would highly recommend rewatch on the YouTube the 4K. I will. I will. Yeah, please, because I, I I didn't really because be honest, I'm on the stream with the Lords. They're talking. They're going crazy. I can't co- focus with with King going crazy sometimes. So yeah. I highly oh, yeah. rock, recommend watching the 4K 60 joint on YouTube or wherever you you know your, t- your big TV. And then see what's okay, going on. Okay, I got on. I got one. I'm breaking. Not, not no, no, okay. like Black Ronin. Thinks okay. I'm losing my ever loving mind. <laughs> and then Nam over here is like kind you. of agree. So there's like, and yeah. it's just one of those. Fair enough. I mean, it's, uh, it's my first time hearing this. That's good. Yeah. Fair it's enough. like, an, an, it's like one of those weird little intangible things like art level. And I will say like, it is Troy Baker. He is mm. still him. He did a pretty good indie though. Like to not be Harrison Ford. He did a pretty good mm. indie. Uh, mm-hmm. It's Indiana Jones and the Great, the Great Circle. Circle. Yeah, it's coming. Mm-hmm. Supposed to be. Is that a fall or is that just 2024? It just says 2024. So I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Now, granted, a vow could get delayed if you guys in your discussion are right. So I mean, according to Maddie, according, <laughs> according to Maddie, Maddie. Uh, it's Maddie Indiana Jones, Jones and Maddie. the Great Circle. Go look it up. I mean, it looks like I enjoy the because you got the puzzles and stuff. The Indiana Ooh. Jones, the Great. Because if there's like a 4K 60 kind of. Mm-hmm. That's the one I want. Okay. okay. Let me see. Hold on. Now, they released it. Just the trailer. Okay, we got 4K. Yeah, just 68. the trailer's up. Mm-hmm. Four million views. On, oh, uh, no. The by the way, I, I was talking to uh, Blackwings in chat, though. As soon as I saw the big tall guy, I was like, that's Tony Todd, right? And it was like, Bro. 100% Tony Todd. Bro. I was like, and he's got that voice, too. So He's got that voice. That's Candyman from back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you're looking at uh, Indies, 
cannot remember his name because the way the main one that I've ever watched, I've seen the the others, but the main one I always watch is Last Crusade. That's the best. Yes. yes. Um, I can't remember the his other scientist buddy, but kind of a little more nerdy, like. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about facial animations, by the way, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. And if you give me a hard time about Starfield, this is why. Oh, no, listen. So, bro, so levels, but that's, but levels, that's, but that's why I was like, when I see stuff like this and the other like, things like, I'll let you finish. But that, that's all I can say is that's why it took away from me. Cause when it is so much dialogue in that game, I get, I get it. it. It's volume. Oh, it's quantity, it. quality. And I get all that whole argument. Yeah, it's just, again, we, we, what you're saying is fair based on where gaming has gone right now and what you have seen in these other genres. The problem I have. Okay, here's with the, the question. Direct comparison. Let me finish. Elder Scrolls the 6. Problem I, the problem I have with these direct comparison is that you're talking about isolated one-off games that don't have the scope of the game you're comparing. So it's like me okay, comparing the only one that open compares world, open world, almost do anything game to a high fidelity hub enclosed, can't interact with objects, can't do all this, and where they can concentrate and put more energy on the face of the combat the, and all that. Probably That's one of all the, I'm saying. One you of them compared to another open world game of its life. Baldur's Gate three. Okay. Oh yeah, that's that's fair. But that's, they got the little turn based guys. Oh, I know. Right? The little term based. No, I know, I know, and there's. I'm just no saying, like, real term when you combat. talk about the scale of dialogue yeah. and facial work, that's the only one that I will say is probably like yeah. that when they put yeah. in the time. I Fair. get, I get it. All I'm saying is, like, when I see this, I'm like, yeah, this is the like, just keep going. That's now, what now, going okay, now here's the yeah, question: absolutely. Elder yeah. Scrolls Six. That's good. What do you expect? No, they got to step it up. They can't. Okay, that's fair. That's this fair. This is where I'm with you, and this is why I don't go at nobody with the avowed criticism, right? Because it, in my opinion, Microsoft knew what they was doing with the order oh, of no, the yeah, I heard you talk the about games. that. Because we saw who was 60 frames at the, and who had their facial animations at the top is the highest <laughs> level. So I'm with you. I do think this is criticism I will give Bethesda. I do think their facial animations in creation engine or you can make the augment like no those are out there that's like old school facial animations where we when you look at what we have today one would hope that they're able to put that level in right to where people where games are now where, when you look at a horizon and you look we just want an elevation in that space provided that doesn't take away from the rest of the scope of the game so that, i get it i trust me i get what everyone is saying i'm never saying you guys are out of pocket i just be careful with the genre di different genre direct comparisons on faces <laughs> certain no, things no, that's I know, I know, that I me it. crazy but that's why i say okay but like elder scrolls gotta make the leap no what i yes. sent you is the timestamp for like one of the whips that i saw all right so let's get the time stamp for the web watcher all right here we go it's like Looking. when he's on the scaffolding yep. yeah grab the dude up I mean, okay, I guess I don't see what the problem is. He yoked him up and, and, and pulled him. To, I don't see what he the didn't like is. pull him. You didn't they see have the, the Wilhelm he... scream in there, which is a whole thing in itself, but. Interesting. It's just funny. It's just interesting to me that this is the part that. I was like, I liked a lot with. of what I saw. I really did. Like, I'm totally there. The set pieces, they're going into this like oasis mm -hmm. in the desert and. I mean, just the artwork and everything. Yeah, I'm looking. The now, animations playing to get like all of that looks really, really good. In the two minute mark of what you sent me, I say starting at there's a whole bunch of whip section in like two oh six. Yeah, that's on, where I'm at right now. He just right. pulled the so, guy. It's and very. It's, just, the, it's quick. It looks, I will give you that. It's very it quick. It looks just like kind of squirrely, and then like, okay. and then just the animation happens. It doesn't. It, and again, that'd be something you probably. It's probably something that hopefully feels better than it looks to me. But again, that's just a me thing. So maybe I'm crazy if I'm the only one saying it, but it's fine. No, no I'm just with you. No, I got, I got one that. other, but there's not a lot. <laughs> that's not a big that point of discussion. I mean, but yeah, the fidelity level and everything, the, Look at the likeness faces. and stuff. Oh, I know. I'm loving it. Like that's. And here's the thing I got to tell you. This is the part I, I really get to talk, talk about, which is you've never really played a machines game game. So oh, you don't apparently. know the Wolfenstein, the new order. You don't know. Apparently I need to so. Bro, these are some of the greatest games. And this is why I'm not worried about this game in the least. I heard people love, yeah. not twins and whatever, but like the two main entries, I heard people love those. Bro, the combat, the first person combat and first person traversal story, everything 
is so tight. There are a few games, like we, we put Bungie here, right? We know what Bungie does with FPS, right? There's only certain people of this class. It's Bungie, it's like id, and it's machine games. It, nobody, I mean, of course, 343, because they've yeah. inherited Bungie, but you know what I'm saying? But like, no one else really comes close when it comes to FPS. So the thing, and the thing about machine games, which kind of puts them at the, even the high level, is they really know how to tell great stories with their protagonists. Like, they've made BJ, what's his name, Black of the last name, into a viable, heartfelt character. And it did things that you're like, yo, this game is making me feel a way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So no, I've heard great yeah, things about. Thing oh, I have faith. That's all. It was just like there was. Yeah, I was like, man, this thing looks up. gorgeous. And then I saw the whip. I was like, it's, a, it's like one of those little things that like the game looks gorgeous. The faces are good. Troy's doing a pretty damn good impression. Mm. And then I just like, it was just the and it was just and it like one thing is not going to stop me from playing a game. Okay. But that's one of those. It's like, and it's going to be like the first time I go to whip. How's it feel in the game? If okay. it feels good and satisfying, cool. If it's like if I'm, it lives I'm, up to my speculation, then I'm going to be like okay. maybe that's kind of literally. It's like that's the weirdest little that's thing. Right. Yeah. I guess my surprise about it is because it's so unique and I, it's like I don't really see games doing that. So the fact that you uh, you know that part bothered you that you didn't connect with you was interested to me. Maybe that's your perspective. Is where you at with it? You need. You need to for them to you need to play it. To it see is the whip iconic whip. whip. So I will do. say I will say if Indiana Jones doesn't get the whip right, it is kind of a thing. So oh, they they got to get it right. That's all. Absolutely, so, absolutely. No. Um. Yeah, I think we're running about two hours right now. Have I seen yeah. that it's getting modern audience? Audience. I honestly don't know what you're talking about. Is he mean like the ESRB rating or something like that? What does he mean? What do you, what do you mean, plague ejected? Modern I see that audience. it's getting modern audience. I'm actually curious about that statement. Black Ronan, once Todd Lee's face is... Got, no, Black Ronan, stop being messy. <laughs> Todd was on that with the good faces, so stop it. <laughs> Them faces in the Annie Jones is crazy. You see a man with the busted nose? Mr. Jones. Oh, no, I mean, it's... Put that's that's self here, Mr. Jones. That joy was... Crazy. Oh, no, that was good. Tony Todd. Tony Todd looks like Tony Todd. I mean, they did yes. a really damn good indie likeness, too. Yes, and it is being Todd's remade for baby. modern audiences. I mean, we're talking about yeah. the game, The Great Circle. I don't know if they're remaking the movies or something like that. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but that's about all I got. Um, still playing some Power World. Probably check out Enshrouded. Then we got Suicide Squad and Wishes next week on Tuesday. So maybe I'll do those and then I'll jump into Suicide Squad. I don't know if you've seen Jarv out here going hard for Suicide Squad. Oh, Jarv is outside. Jarv got to go Squad. play the thing, though. Jarv got to be. I mean, he's in UK. He got to go like be part of the play test and the early Shut stuff. So he got to go start like he's in he's in that circle right now. So he's oh, I love it. Love to see. No, he's but he's been I love job. Yeah, good to see hard work paying off for him. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, next week we got things and you got two games. You have how many okay. hours of games between these two games? Do you think how long is the Tekken? Uh, how long does Tekken keep you occupied? Tekken's I got to do first because I got to do the main story. I've been. Tech, those uh, fighting game stories can't be no more than four to six hours. I would. I, I was going to wonder. It's like, how long that. do you think that goes? Yeah. So I'll get Tekken done first just to get that out because I know once I start Infinite Wealth. Yeah. And the reviews that I had a good conversation with Gene Park, and he's like, bro, he's like 50, 60 you? hours or like 80, 100? I'm probably thinking like maybe 30, 40, but I didn't, I didn't actually speak okay. to him on, on, on I didn't um, know. game length. But um, yeah, man, I, I'm hearing so many good things about my game, and it's like, Yo, they may have done it. They may have finally taken my niche baby into mass. You know what I mean? The world where now everybody realized how great a game and a great a series this is. So I'm happy, you know, for Like a Dragon and they, basically the mini games in Hawaii alone. Yeah. You know, there's so much to get entrenched with. But then they're telling a heartfelt, passionate, almost, you know, some people say tear jerkers or some part story. So I'm ready for the ride, man. I'm such, I'm so proud of RGG that they're getting the shine that they deserve. Both 90 Metacritics. That's, that's insane. Yeah, that's, I, I saw that and I was fact. like, well, now you're just, uh, too many good games to play at one time. I saw your tweet. I That'll be me in about two months. <laughs> oh yeah. You're going to be joining that pain circle soon. Well, anything else as you wrap up? I mean, you had a hell of a week, so I don't know what you do next. Rest. Yeah, just you should rest. sleep a little bit. I'll, just, I'm not gonna play some games, bro. We got that tagger. We got that. We got that infinite wealth. So I got to play. I don't want to um, look over on Discord as I'm getting ready to go to bed at a reasonable hour, like even midnight, and you're over there just cooking. I'm not responsible for what game status you see on my Discord. 
yeah. and how long if you that see little it. thing is green you've been you're you're still awake <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no, Robin Jones. Yeah, Shamu 2.0. The, 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 I, would, I would consider Yakuza the spiritual successor and just done so much more better. And now the JRPG aspect to it, it it's really taking the next level. But yeah, can't wait. That's going to be me on that. Um, no, Probably no guests this Sunday just to kind of yeah. ease back in. We've, we've had a lot going on. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited and just ready to play a lot of games. And what sucks is I was getting into Baldur's Gate hard and now i gotta kind of that's gonna be a time out for a bit oh yeah <laughs> till i get these done and then back to business so we'll see yeah for me i think i've covered it so that's pretty much all we got uh did not think this was gonna go two plus today but we ended up chatting yeah, yeah. a lot oh, so a little flashpoint action, little flashpoint you know? style Lily bontis and mm-hmm. cog you know yes sir uh yeah well travis will be back he is uh busy doing fun things as usual mm-hmm. and for all Excellent. of you guys out there yeah, all of you guys out there, thank you for listening, watching, or if you if you listen, then please just, you know, give us a like, a thumbs up, a high rating, whatever it is to help us, you know, climb those platforms. If you made it this far, at least, you probably checked out a while ago. But if you made it this far, please support the show. Uh, other than that, thank you guys. Cognito, always a pleasure, sir. Always and love, thank you all for turning up for the early impromptu show. Look for it on audio platforms. And then I'm going to start posting these on the last word podcast, actual YouTube channel. They will be posted somewhere else. So have a good one, everybody. And for this episode, it has been the last, last word. word. <laughs>